Welcome to ESPN's exclusive presentation of Circuit City Bowl Week. It's another perfect night in San Diego. A night of purple passion. The second best from the Pac-10 and Big 12. The Cats from the Midwest. The Dogs from the Northwest collide in California. These are the new Huskies. Rick Neuheisel's fire has re-energized a program and put the bark back in UW football. Armed with an explosive quarterback who's on the mark with his arm and on the run with his legs. Bill Snyder's energized the turnaround of the century. Instead of another losing decade, players like explosive punt returner David Allen have made the 90s a decade of pat consistency. And if you dare run on the D, there's a man in the middle to just say no. The runner-up from the Pac-10 Washington looks for the upset against number seven, Kansas State. The beauty of the city is matched by this Bulls pageantry. The flyby brings you to Qualcomm Stadium, San Diego for the 22nd. Culligan Holiday Bowl, K-State, Washington. Hi, everyone. Mike Tirico. So glad you've joined us. When this decade started, Kansas State was the worst program in Division I. 90s, they're in the top 10. 86 wins. But think about this. Only one of those wins has been against a top 10 team, and they're 3-3 three and three in bowl games and a clunker last year in the Alamo Bowl against Purdue. Tonight, Kansas State can't win the national title, but they can finish in the top five with a victory, and maybe more importantly, they can earn back some of the respect they lost bowl week last year. I'm joined by the Thursday night guys, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit. Last year, guys, we talked K-State football with Michael Bishop. This year, we talked Wildcat football. It's the defense, Herbie. Well, if you look at their defense coordinator, Phil Bennett, he's enjoyed his first stay in Manhattan, Kansas, because of the way his defense has dominated teams. They use a lot of speed and pressure to suffocate opposing offenses. Look at some of the numbers. They don't lie. He has been dominating as a coach, and his players have been dominating as a team. You can see where they rank in the nation. Most important stat there, they get off the field. They only allow 22 percent on third down conversions and that is very very impressive tonight because of Washington's ability to run the football it's a run oriented attack they're going to overload that line of scrimmage hoping to put Washington in obvious passing downs and then bring the house and blitz all night but they're going to have to be careful because Washington has a talented quarterback by the name of Marcus Tuviasa Sopo. You know Kirk to attack that Kansas State defense Washington will use their star quarterback junior quarterback Marcus Tuiasa Sopo. Now Marcus runs or throws the ball an average of 40 three times a game at 75 percent of Washington's snaps. He accounted for 18 touchdowns, which is over 50 percent of the Washington score. So it's obvious Kansas State's got to do something to stop Marcus Tuiasa Sopo. Can they? That's the question. No one else has. We'll wait and see. Lee Tuiasa Sopo replaced Brock Hewitt, led the Huskies to their fifth consecutive bowl game. Only Stanford had a better record in the Pac-10 this year. Kansas State, 97 seasons, one bowl game. This is their seventh consecutive bowl game. Jerry Punch joins us, and we'll kick off the Colgate Holiday Bowl next. Tis the season to party with Multimax. Because this month, we've got the hippest movies. Yo, 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 yo to you. On Cinemax, catch a different film every night at 8. A big premiere on Fridays. And see Sigourney Battle Murderers. And aliens. And on more Max, we've got intense vanguards, classic faces, and tons of your favorite tough guy. Ow. Turn to Max, more Max, and Max West. Ow. Pump it up with Multi Max on Direct TV. 24 years ago, a child was born who would one day take the golf world by storm Tiger Woods. The Golf Channel is celebrating his birthday with 24 hours of Tiger. Get Tiger's views on his 97 Masters win on In His Own Words and relive some of his tournament victories, including the 98 Johnny Walker Classic and this year's Deutsche Bank. Join the birthday bash, 24 hours of Tiger. Now. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 1999 Culligan Holiday Bowl is brought to you by ESPN Sports Century. A hundred years, a thousand moments in bookstores now. By Rolaids, R-O-L-A-I-D-S spells relief. And by Degree, the body heat activated antiperspirant. 
seventh ranked Kansas State has one of the top defenses in the nation. We've told you that, but they are much more than that. More on that, the best sideline guy in the business. Here's the doc, Jerry Punch. Thank you very much, Michael, and happy holidays, everyone. You know, you don't win 10 games in a very competitive Big 12 conference without being able to score points. In spite of losing nine offensive starters from a year ago, including a Heisman Trophy runner-up in Michael Bishop, the Wildcats averaged this year almost 40 points a game. They didn't rebuild. They simply reloaded. Take, for example, junior quarterback Jonathan Beasley, who finished second in the nation in average yards per completion. Why? Because he throws the ball vertically downfield to a speedy receiver by the name of Quincy Morgan, who led the conference with nine touchdowns, averaging almost 50 yards a touchdown, and their biggest weapon might be their special teams player, David Allen, who tied an NCAA record with his seventh career punt return for a touchdown this year. Mike, look for the Wildcats to try to pounce early and often here tonight. Part of the Bill Snyder recipe, trying to even that bowl record, but he has turned around this program. It's really the best turnaround in the century in this sport when you look at it in college football. On the opposite side, Rick Neuheisel done something no other Washington coach has done. First year in Seattle to a bowl game. Just the fourth head coach of the University of Washington in 42 years. Every time we come to San Diego, we wonder, why don't we live here? It is another perfect night in this gorgeous city. The temperature 66. The weather will not factor in this game between the second best team in the Pac-10 and the Big 12. Kansas State will wear the purple tonight. Washington the white. Kansas State after winning the toss deferred the option to the second half. So Washington will receive. So glad you have joined us for what traditionally is one of the best bowl games. The 22nd Holiday Bowl. More than half of these games have been decided in the final two minutes. Kansas State a double dig digit favorite tonight. The kickoff to Joe Jarzinka at the five. The senior for Washington down the sideline. Joe Jarzinka takes the opening kickoff to the 44. Great start for Washington on offense. Here's the Sun Microsystems starting lineup. They scored 28 points per game. Maurice Shaw, one of four backs that will play. All four had a 100-yard rushing game this year. The receivers. Harris, the deep threat, is healthy. Jurgens, the top pass catcher. Stevens, the tight end, is a redshirt freshman with NFL potential down the line. On the offensive line, Kirk Connell, the only senior. These guys are grinders. We will need rushing yards against this tough Kansas State defense tonight. After the 38-yard kickoff return, Tuiasa Sopo gives to Shaw, and that is Mark Simino, All-American defensive. Kansas State's D, the toughest to pass on in the nation because they have a good pass rush, led by Darren Howard, the all-time sack leader, even though he only had five and a half this year. You saw 42 make the play. Just watch Simino before the snap. You'll usually end up following the ball. In the secondary, here's the key guy. Lamar Chapman, number one. A monster year in this tweak defense. He led by example. He had five INTs along with 35. Dyshot Carter. After a loss of two, Tuiasa Sopo to the air. To the ground. Darren Howard, the all-time sack leader. Senior from St. Petersburg, Florida. We get a good shot of the pass protection, but Howard is so quick. You watch number 49 to right of your picture. He never gives up right here and keeps after. The reason why I like him, Kirk, when we saw him physically last year, he's got that little speed, that quickness. Yeah, he has his feet from the outside, front of him. Hey, hey, doing a good job up the middle, getting the pressure, forcing the quarterback to move around there. Needing to get to the 45. Third and 15. Three receivers. They run it with Shaw. Pass them up the middle for a first down. Third and 15. K State looking pass. And the senior, Maurice Shaw, takes it to the 45 of KSU and keeps the drive alive. Kansas State thinking pass here. Obviously, in third draw. A nice draw trap here. They bring across number 60, Dasty. Picks up the big block, and once Shaw gets into the open field, he's dangerous. But what happens, they put Dasty right in Seminole's face. And when they do that, he can't get away from him. That's a very good call by Rick Neuheisel. Dominic Dasty, a player who's played through injury. Tuiasa Sopo up top. To the wide side for Gerald Harris. The junior from Kent, Washington, could not hang on. 
Marcus Tuiasa Sofo, we saw him earlier in the year this year, and he has grown as a quarterback. This system has grown around him. He's very, very accurate as a thrower when he gets out on the move and to the outside, but he's multifaceted. He can hurt you running and throwing, and as you pointed out in the open, Coach, he's going to have to play very well tonight for the Huskies to win this game. He's improved so much from his sophomore to junior year, Kirk. He has three times as many yards this year as he had last year. Is that improvement or what? He's taking advantage of the opportunity. A second and ten throw. They pick up the pressure. Pass on the run. Good for seven yards to Todd Elstrom. Sophomore receiver. Marcus Chuiasasopo, the son of Manu Chuiasasopo. Remember him? At the time, he was undersized as defensive tackle for the Seahawks. UCLA Bruin. Manu said yesterday, Dad's a dog now. He's a Husky <laughs> dad. And family, including Marcus, Marcus's younger brother, a good football player as well, will be going to the University of Washington. Manu finished his career with the 49ers in San Francisco. And now son, Marcus, has just one back for third and four. The option to Paul Arnold, the highly touted freshman recruit, makes a miss and gets a first down. Paul Arnold was pushed down by Lamar Chapman, the free safety, but Arnold was perhaps the highest touted recruit to ever sign with Washington. This is an outstanding call here by the offensive coordinator for Washington, Carl Durrell. Once he gets to the outside on this option, it, Lamar Chapman has 30 yards to run to try to catch up to the tailback Arnold. But watch Phil Bennett told us, the defensive coordinator, that the free safety had to make the tackles. The reason why he missed that tackle, he tried to hit him too hard. All he had to do is wrap him up and drop him, and he stopped the first down. Washington can't win this game from way back. They need to get the lead early. Arnold. Look at the wiggle on Arnold. Five yards. Boy, has he come on as the season has come on. After all, what do you expect? He was in high school last year. He's a true freshman. It took him a while to learn what it's about at this level, and he produced in the Washington State game. Well, considering the changing of coaches from Coach Lambright to Rick Neuheisel, you have a, a position here where they didn't have a lot of time to go out and get a lot of recruits. Paul Arnold clearly was their number one recruit a year ago. He played this year as a true freshman. The more experience he has gained, the more valuable a player he has become. He will be a great one by the time he leaves Seattle. Neuheisel's offense with second and four. Opening drive to the Culligan Holiday Bowl. Four in the pattern behind Kane Looker, the slot back. Well, they picked up their last two third downs running the football. If you remember Rick Neuheisel's offense in Colorado, there was an option in that offense. But because of Tuiasa Sopo's natural ability to run the option, it's been added as a facet of this offense. And remember, Rick told us yesterday, his staff knew nothing, Kirk, about the option. They had to learn it from Marcus. That's right. I remember that? Most of his staff, their background is drop back in the Pac-10 West Coast offense. So they were learning on the move, and they were fortunate to have a quarterback and a fullback to do the option game. Confusion with the officials here as they Mark the ball ready for play. The 25 second play clock was running down. This is an ACC officiating crew led by referee Robert Wood. Please make a correction on the clock. The time should be 12.02. The second down pass was incomplete and the clock was running. You know, when you come into a bowl game and for, for about three or four weeks you've been hearing how you're gonna play Kansas State and you don't have a chance of what it's gonna take to try to win this game. You open up the game with a good kickoff return, and now you start to pick up a few first downs. I know it's early in the game, but Washington, this is a big drive for them. Now the play clock ran down to zero, and that's a bad penalty to take. But the right tackle, Kirk Connell, moved yep. because he was so worried Five about... False start on the offense. Penalty. And that'll happen a lot when you're a big offensive tackle like he is, 6'5", 300 pounds, and you got to block a guy like Howard who's so quick, you want to get out of there. Yeah, and as you know, Coach, one of the things that they love to do when Kansas State knows you're going to throw, I talked about in the open, they're going to pin their ears oh. back, they're going to keep you guessing where the pressure is going to come. They're going to bring five or six, but they're going to make you think as an offensive line, they're going to make you think as a quarterback. Keep you on your toes. Key play is watch Marcus two weak two outs of Sopo on a run. There goes Lee. 
Regis blocks. Semino pulled him down. Two yards shy of the first down at the 22. If I was playing to the Asasopo, I would never, ever, when he drops back, not have Semino watching him and spying him because he's more dangerous running the football sometimes as he is throwing it. Well, that's where he's picked He's picked up a lot of his yeah. yardage. He's second on the team in rushing, and he picks up a lot of that when he has the ability to improvise and scramble around. John Anderson did a very good job. True freshman kicker was struggling, missing right from the right hash mark in warm-ups. This 39-yarder right down the middle. The freshman who solved a longtime bugaboo in the 90s for Washington field goal kicking puts the Huskies on the board first. Unleash power, sell more per hour, get business going, keep it growing, change ammunition, kill competition, unlock data, make profits fatter, take sharper aim, boost market gain. Save more time, more peace of mind, forge better ties, economize, link devices without a crisis. Our technology is hot, we are the dot. It's the water, it's water. It's a pure, cold shower from nature. Bringing life to your home, to the world. Does your family's water need a clean bill of health? Find out at Culligan.com. Worried about Y2K? Get a new Buick. Why? Let's say the city goes dark. Buick's headlights come on automatically. Very clever. No heat. Dual climate control. So get cozy in your comfy power seat with your portable TV and watch the test pattern. During Buick's Not to Worry event, get a Century 2000 Special Edition with a Millennium offer worth $2,000, just in time for the year 2000. No blow dryer? Sunroof! ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 1999 Culligan Holiday Bowl is presented by Culligan. For all your water solutions, visit us online at Culligan.com. And in part by Buick and your local Buick dealers. Isn't it time for a real car? Sunset, the backdrop for the queue. Qualcomm Stadium, San Diego, opened 32 years ago. The site of Super Bowl 22 and 32. And tonight, Champions Trophy will go to the winner of the Culligan Holiday Bowl. A good opening drive for Washington after... The nice kickoff return by Joe Jarzinka, the senior, put him in good field position. Let's see what Kansas State will do with its first offensive possession. John Anderson to kick off. David Allen, the explosive return man, one of the deep men, with a short kick to keep it from Allen. And it's Quincy Morgan, who's a great speedster. The wide receiver, Morgan, takes it across midfield and to the Washington 48. They tried to wrinkle him. Kansas State speed still got them. Let's check the Kansas State offense that scored 39 points per game. Only Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech scored more. Frank Murphy, the fastest player in K-State history, one of three tailbacks we'll see for them. He's finally healthy. Well, you saw what the speed of Morgan can do. Aaron Lockett, brother Kevin, the all-time leading receiver at this school. Randall Cummins, the center, leads an offensive line. The strength is on the right, with two sophomores hanging out, 70 and 65. The first play is a run with Murphy. Frank Murphy goes out of bounds against the Washington defense. That was pretty good. Middle of the pack of the Pac-10. Gave up 25 points a game. Jabari Issa was a Playboy All-America preseason, but was exposed during his senior season. He's come on the last few games, though. Lester Towns has good speed. Jeremiah Farms, number four, important in the pass rush. In the secondary, a little bit of a shakeup. Hakeem Akbar, maybe their best secondary man, does not start. He missed a meeting earlier this week. He'll play later on tonight. A little option to Murphy. The arm tackle brings down the senior. The flag came down as well. At the 40-yard line is where Murphy ended up. Murphy missed four games with injury this year. Gets the start as he's back to health, but the Cats will be backed up.
Guys, what do you think the key is when Bill Snyder's team has the ball tonight offensively? Well, they, they are a team that loves to be able to take advantage of their speed. Now that they're they're fully loaded from a, a standpoint of the skill, you look at Quincy Morgan, Jonathan Beasley, their quarterback now is healthy. He's effective on the option. But I think they can't have penalties like this. When they get into clear passing situations, I think they get into a little bit of trouble. Here's a stat that doesn't go well for Kansas State. They're 70 and 5 when they score first. Mm -hmm. And they don't do as well when they don't score. I know three, but it's still a score. That's right. But they are, they are a team that loves to put pressure on you on the perimeter because of the way they can get up the field with speed on the outside. I think it's important psychologically they to answer that three points. I agree. Jonathan Beasley, the junior quarterback from Glendale, Arizona, has five in the pattern for second and 13. Murphy out of the backfield. Made a nice adjustment to catch it. Out of bounds at the 22. 28 yards. Seventh catch of the year for Murphy. One of the things about Murphy, you got to understand, when he came out of junior college, he was the most highly re recruited player, maybe besides O.J. Simpson, ever to come out of junior college. Great speed. The one thing they talked about was his fumble. He changed that, but look at the great hands, Kirk. A nice adjustments, huh? Yeah, great shot there at the beginning of that replay of Daniels and Murphy one on one. He slipped right out of the backfield on a wheel route, and when he got to the sideline. Nice job by the quarterback, Jonathan Beasley, buying a little bit of time and laying it over his shoulder. 24 is a defensive back number, but that is a linebacker in coverage against the fastest man to ever play for K-State. Watch the play clock, Beasley. Got the timeout beforehand. So the first year starter, who started all but one game this year for Kansas State, burns his first timeout. K-State at the Washington 22 when we come back. Let's go sunning, it's so good for you. Let's go sunning, need the sky of blue. Greet the sun every morn. Feel as free and happy as the day you were born. Let's for your free vacation planning kit, log on to our website or call 1 800 4 San Diego. Pretty flowers need the sun. Worried about Y2K? Get a new Buick. Why? Let's say the city goes dark. Buick's headlights come on automatically. Very clever. No heat. Dual climate control. So get cozy in your comfy power seat with your portable TV and watch the test pattern. During Buick's Not to Worry event, get a Century 2000 Special Edition with a millennium offer worth $2,000. Just in time for the year 2000. No blow dryer? Sunroof. America Online introduces new version 5.0. The easiest just got easier. You've got mail, you've got pictures. Instant messages. Customer service is always there to help. If I knew it was this easy, I would have started a long time ago. America Online. So easy to use, no wonder it's number one. A significant discovery in eye health may be lutein, a nutrient found in these healthy foods. Now Centrum has the only leading multivitamins with lutein to help maintain your precious sight. Centrum, Centrum Silver, now more complete with lutein. The last game of the millennium. It's time to send 1999 out with a bang. The Sanford Independence Bowl, Ole Miss, Oklahoma at 8.30, Friday on ESPN. Very nice start to this game here in San Diego. Washington, good kickoff return, a field goal. Kansas State, an even better kickoff return, trying to take the lead on the Huskies out of the Pac-10. Jonathan Beasley, what big shoes to fill. Those of the Heisman runner-up of a year ago, Michael Bishop. He's emerged as the season has gone on. The defense move, then the left tackle had the flag thrown. Damon McIntosh, 77. Dead ball, Dead ball the staff. Hold start on the offense. Five yard penalty. McIntosh and Ian Moses, two seniors on the left side of Bill Snyder's offense. The right side, where the two sophomores are, Robertson and Barnett, that may be the side where they run when they really need to get a few yards. The first and 15 throw. From Beasley to Quincy Morgan, first team All Big 12 performer, knocked out inside the 20. Love the look of Quincy Morgan and his ability. 
to get up the field. You'll see it tonight at some point, the jailbreak screen, which Jonathan Beasley has loved. It's been feast or famine a lot of times this year for this offense because of the way they like to throw the ball vertically downfield. They take chances. It's not a real sophisticated scheme as far as third downs, so they're going to throw it down the field. Not a real high completion percentage, but when they hit it, they hit it big. They are Raider-esque. The big ball is a part of their offense. After gaining eight, second and seven, Jono Left is the fullback on this option, trying to clear some space for Murphy. Frank Murphy followed out of bounds by Lester Towns, the senior from up the road in Pasadena, California. Third and short coming up. Murphy is the speed man. You'll see David Allen, the outstanding kick returner later on, at tailback as well. Mike, you and Kirk, watch it. Looks like he pulled something right here. He's going good. See, look at that. Looks like he's a pulled a left thigh muscle. Go to the he's, doc for that. Doc, doc, those, doc what, what kind of muscle doc? is that right thigh hole? It's a left. left thigh. That's right. It's called the left. It's oh. called the left, first of all. Right, left was a thigh, anyhow. He stayed in the game, though, for third and a couple. Beasley changes the play with five on the play clock. He looks to be right near the first down marker. Looked like Washington was going to blow that one up in the backfield. But a couple, Jabari Issa making his final Washington performance tonight. Eight sacks last year, just two this year. They're going to be short of the first down. It's fourth down. And the offense will stay on the field for Kansas State. If he makes it or not, I like this call by Bill Snyder because it's putting the pressure on his football team to wake up. The three just answers him with an even. This puts a boom, a dagger into him. This is fourth and a full yard. Murphy. Jermaine Smith saved the touchdown. Washington does a good job of getting into the line of scrimmage. Great view here from up top. Once he gets in there, look at you got to grab him. You got to form up, make the tackle there. All the linebackers, Lester Towns moved in there, filled up the gap, but the linebackers got to make the play. Ron Hudson, who coached Robert Smith, the great player in Minnesota, told us this kid reminds him more than any other player we coached. Right, Kurt? An easy touchdown for Kansas State. Beasley brings it in. But the fourth down run is what saved it for KSU. A little momentum swings very quickly there. Jamie Ream, the junior, on to try the extra point. That'll be Mike Ronsick hold. The Wildcats take the lead. 47 yards on the drive. Seven plays, five of them from Frank Murphy. None more important than maybe not the second, but the third effort on fourth down to get the first down and lead to the touchdown. Everyone loves college basketball. What do you love most? I say fanatical fans, scrappy players, and ESPN Full Court. Call 1-800-GET-SPORT and order ESPN Full Court on DirecTV. You'll pay only $99 for two payments of $49.50. With ESPN Full Court, you can follow your favorite teams in top conferences. And don't forget underdogs with tough coaches. Right now is the right time to order ESPN Full Court. We've got a special delivery <gasps> that'll make your dreams come true. You're not the first guy to tell me that. HBO The Works brings you bundles of hits, powerful originals, outrageous sports, and a comedy special to keep you laughing into the next millennium. That's what's really going on here, baby. It's entertainment all wrapped up in seven great channels. Ooh. <laughs> wow. Treat yourself to HBO The Works on DirecTV. 
scoring is an art form displayed on the ice for all to see. Both Owen Nolan and Tony Amante can use their sticks to create masterpieces. Sharks, Blackhawks, Sunday at 8.30, only on ESPN. This is the game. ESPN Classic presents Classic Sports Movies. Every Sunday night, the world of sports and movies collide with real classics. Premiering January 9th on ESPN Classic. To get ESPN Classic, call 1-800-CLASSIC-TODAY. Downtown San Diego, adorned with the holiday-colored lights. Hope you're enjoying the continuation of this holiday weekend. Kansas State gets the fourth down, then gets the touchdown on the run by Beasley on the very next play. Two possessions, two scores. Jamie Reams kickoff, dribbling near the sideline, goes into the end zone and becomes a touchback once it crosses the goal line. Washington's offense coming on the field, and here's Jerry Punch. Guys, of Washington's first offensive drive was a huge confidence boost for the Huskies. Now, Rick Neuheisel, before the game, talked to me. He said he had a lot of question marks. Number one, could they move the ball on Kansas State's defense? And if they could move it, could they sustain it? Remember, they led the Pac-10 in title possession this year. Well, the answers were they moved the ball, they sustained it. Their very first drive used up three minutes and 36 seconds of clock and came away with points. Although just three, they came away with points, and that was important. Jerry, we need to emphasize that for people who are so used to New Heisel and the passing offense of Colorado. This team led the Pac-10 in time of possession. Tui also Sobo to throw. Nice stretching catch by Gerald Harris at the 39. Give him 19 on that one. Harris led the team in yards receiving this year, 571. Did you watch? Marcus Tuyasa Sopo, he'll hit Harrison, and what they do is they take it man-for-man -man on man-for-man -man coverage on Carter, and he just makes a great play. Kirk, the thing I liked about that was play action on first down throws the linebackers. Yep, man-to-man -man coverage. Washington feels pretty good about their matchups with their bigger receivers against the Kansas State cornerbacks in man coverage. Pat Conniff, the fullback, is in motion. Inside handoff to Shaw is not fooling. First team, all Big 12 defensive end, Darren Howard. Before second down, a reminder to join ESPN 2 tomorrow at 3 from Boise. It's the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Chris Redmond, you may see the first quarterback taken in the NFL draft if you watch Louisville take on Boise State's Broncos. ESPN and ESPN 2, you're home for bowl week. That's tomorrow at 3 from Boise. See one of the schools, Coach Corso. Was a it's head interesting. Coach. That, uh, that kid, Redmond, his father, Bob Redmond, was my first center at the University of Louisville. He was a great high school football coach, still is, in the city of Louisville. With the play clock down at 2, Tuiasa Sopo had to burn a Washington timeout, same as KSU had to do on the prior drive. Washington is 7-4. and four. They are second in the Pac-10, tied with Oregon, but they beat the team that's going to the Rose Bowl to represent the great Pac-10, and that is Stanford. We say great, kind of tongue-in-cheek, because it wasn't a great year, but this was one of the great all-time performances in the history of the conference or any conference. Tui Asasopo against Stanford had <laughs> over 500 total yards, the first player ever to run for over 200 and throw for over 300 in the same game. Ever. Ever. Look at the players who've had 300 passing and 100 rushing in the last couple of seasons. And a few names we're familiar with. Michael Bishop, now a backup quarterback for the New England Patriots. Of course, the KSU alum. And Sean King, who may lead the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as the starting quarterback into the playoffs this year. So Tui Asasombo has the unique talent that those two have. Well, he has a great deal of ability, and he had to sit and wait and, and buy his time because of Brock Huard's ability to throw the ball. And with Brock Huard leaving early, it opened up the door for Tui Asasombo, and he took full advantage of it. This year, I think you're just beginning to see what he's capable of doing. He's a first-year starter. He comes back next year. He'll be one of the top quarterbacks in the country, not only in the Pac-10, but all of college football. Simino, the All-American linebacker, surveying the situation. For second and 11. Pat Connors, the fullback, played high school football with his quarterback, Tui Asasopo, and knocked down Lamar Chapman. That's the first team all Big 12 safety who got leveled on a 23-yard pickup, the longest for Connors this season. 
Outstanding game plan here. And nice scheme by Carl Durrell, the offensive coordinator. They're going to get Conniff out in the backfield, but what you're going to miss to the outside is the receivers running a little bit of an X cross with the flanker and the H-back opening up a huge void for Conniff. And he's not used to getting an opportunity out there. He catches the ball, and then he lowers the hammer on Chapman. First and ten. Got him to jump. Three play. So he has to show for us more than five. He's very close to a first down. Despite the offside flag. Good little job of sportsmanship after the Jared Cooper solid lick. He's the Kansas State defender, number 40. I think he's got the first down, so this flag will go bye-bye. First down, boys. Not you're going to measure. ACC crew, if you're not familiar, once you get to bowl games, crews from other conferences work these bowl games. Hey, crew, run, boy. Keep it up. Let's go. You know, when you look at Washington offensively, and the running has been effective, they picked up two first downs on third down running the ball. They had over 50, rush, 50 rushing attempts five different times this year. That's a that's, lot of rushing attempts for anybody, never mind a new high team. Right, right, and that's when they've been very successful. That's going to look to do tonight. I want you to appreciate this because this is coming from a team that beginning of the year was simply a drop-back team. Early, keep an eye on this man right here because that's the read of Marcus Tuiasasopo. As he comes down on Conniff, he's going to pull it. That's a triple option. Then he's going to attack Chapman. Chapman takes the pitch, and Tuiasasopo says, thank you very much. I'll take it down for a first down. The key part about this place are all the blocking Seminole, the inside linebacker all the time. First and ten, Conniff the fullback. Gains about three yards. I mentioned while Conniff was running for that big pass reception that he and Tui Asasopo were high school teammates. Kirk, how important was that to adding the option to this team? Well, I, I think if you talk to any coach in college football, they would tell you that the relationship between the quarterback and a fullback, when you're going to install a little bit of a beer, a little bit of a triple, just to incorporate it to scare the defense, you have to have that mesh. And these guys are familiar with each other going back to high school. You could not have been able to install that off that part of the offense without having that background with those two players. Rick Neuheisel said the rule they had, nobody coaches these two guys. That's right. Remember? That's yeah. right. Stay yeah. back and let them do it. On second down, and eight. Pressured and brought down Darren Howard's second sack of the night. The man who set the K-State all-time sack record only had five and a half this year. He has two in the first nine minutes. Well, Darren Howard, number 49, is six foot four, 270. But watch him, he starts to the outside, Kirk, and then he comes to the inside and just beats the guy all the time. Remember, one of the rules as an offensive tackle is never let that in inside, right? Yeah, you're right. And, and if you look at Howard over his career, he was an outstanding athlete. If you talk to coaches about him, they would say, we love his athletic ability. If he'd only work a little bit harder. This year, he's made that commitment. It doesn't show in the sacks, but he is a complete football player because of his work ethic. Doesn't show because he was double teamed darn near all year. On third and 17, Hunt at the 30 could get them in field goal range. I believe that was Dane Looker, the senior slot back. And the Washington fans who've made the trip from Seattle call out look. As they often do at Husky Stadium. It does get them a little bit closer for a 47-yard field goal attempt. So John Anderson, whose long of the year was a 56-yarder in the overtime loss to UCLA, has backup quarterback Ryan Miltich as his holder. No win to factor in from 47 right down the middle. And in those two back-to-back -back video bits, you saw what the two coaches are, the enthusiasm of New Heisel, the business-like style of Bill Snyder's team. Still leads by one. The true freshman from the state of Florida. As we said, he has the leg. Three kicks over 50 yards this year. And the man who wears it on his sleeve, 
Glad to see his freshman come through with a couple of big kicks here in the opening quarter. You know, you might look at that and see him it's early in the game and he's going crazy like that. You might think, what's you know, what, what's the big deal? But you have to understand when you're when you're such a heavy underdog, you go back to what Doc was talking about earlier. This team is feeding off of this. And the longer they can stay in the game, the more pressure will be put on Kansas State and the more Washington will begin to believe that they can play with the wild with the uh, Wildcats. Yeah, nice. And the true test of Kansas State is their ability to answer again. We'll have a chance to watch the character of Kansas State if they can answer. And that guy right there, David Allen, he can answer anything quickly. It was interesting. The first kick, they, they did a pooch <laughs> kick to Murphy. Or not Murphy, but Morgan. And Morgan yeah. and Murphy are just as dangerous right. as, as Allen, so you can't catch a break. It's funny. The Pac-10 team is the slow team. The Big 12 team is the real <laughs> speed team here tonight. Well, they kick towards Lamar Chapman. Number one, the starting safety. Slipped and fell as he was trying to get away from Amari Lowe. The backup quarterback makes the tackle. Great triple header for you as Circuit City Bowl week continues. The Insight.com Bowl from Tucson. We'll see Colorado out of the Big 12 against Boston College out of the Big East. The Axel Liberty Bowl has Colorado State against Southern Miss, which made some offensive staff changes this week. And the Sanford Independence Bowl, David Cutcliffe's Ole Miss Rebels take on the Sooners of Oklahoma. It all begins with bowl game day at 1 Eastern on ESPN. You're home for bowl week. We are right in the middle of it. And before you get to New Year's Day, no better bowl than this one right here. Quick hitter from the 18 to Big Joe Hall for a yard. This is the tailback, not the fullback. He's 6'2 and just, just under 300 pounds. You sure about that? <laughs> I know what that's what it says, but my gosh, we were down there for the pregame. He is a big, big man. As you see, Hall led the team with 613 rushing yards. You've already seen Murphy. And when Allen does a lot of kick returning, you don't see him at much, as much a tailback. He had to come in when Murphy was hurt earlier in the year and did a nice job. Ooh, Hall hung on there on his toenails. Intercepted underneath. Renard Edwards to the 20-yard line. Senior from Pasco, Washington, his first interception in a Husky uniform. Keep an eye on Lester Towns coming right through here. Hall doesn't like to pick up the block. And the mistake that Jonathan Beasley makes right there is he simply throws off his back foot, looking for the tight end. See how he's not stepping and throwing. Doesn't account for Edwards. Edwards steps in and makes the interception. The reason why that was intercepted is because Edwards came from what they call the pit position. He was just sneaking around, looking for that. Boom, went for the ball. Sudden, he never saw him. Sudden change situation. Will they go for the end zone here? Tuiasa Sopo. This looks like a pass, but it was snuffed out. Willie Hurst was looking deep, but the defense was not fooled. Travis Litton, the senior linebacker, along with Mario Fadafehi, giving Kansas State its third sack of the quarter. As the quarterback makes the fake, you watch this come down and pitch it. Nobody in the line looks like it's a run. They're all sitting up there pass protecting, and what the secondary does, as you know, Kirk and Mike, they just watch the linemen. They don't watch the back boom there. That was poor execution on the offensive line, not selling the run. They sold the pass too much. Second and 18. Off the corner. Here comes Howard again. Got him at the legs, and then the rest of the Wildcat team finished him off. Darren Howard may equal his season sack total tonight. I don't know how Darren Howard got out of St. Petersburg, Florida. <laughs> that kid's a Florida kid, and boy, he comes off the ball real quick. Mike, look. Oh, I love his quickness. I love his quickness. Don't you, Kirk, Mike? I, I'll tell you how he did. He was 210 pounds coming out of high school. Is that right? He had the body of a basketball player, and he's the example of Bill Snyder's program. The guys who aren't the perfect height and weight come in, work hard, and Howard's emerged here. You can tell he used to be on some kind of a position. He's got number 49 on. Tuiasa Sopo had to burn another timeout. The second for Washington here in this opening quarter. 
Washington trying to stay in field goal range. soft water. Some people don't. Culligan is water. Does your family's water need a clean bill of health? Find out at Culligan.com. Oh, Mom, it's great. My first apartment. You should see it. It's huge. <laughs> when you've got things to talk about, it's a good idea to dial 1010321 first. And I got a great view of the river. With 1010321, you get 50% off calls over 10 minutes. That's just eight cents a minute, day or night, and no monthly fees. And then 50% off, you can share every last detail. And I even have a garden. Talk as long as you want with 1010-321. Back at the Culligan Holiday Bowl, Washington has burned two timeouts, Kansas State one. We've had four possessions, three scores, and an interception. Nobody was better when the down was three in college football this year. Jay Presser with six to Yasusoko Reddit. Todd Elstrom stays on his feet. Actually lost three yards, fighting for extra yards. The corner blitz from Jeremetrius Butler forced him to get rid of it quickly. Field goal attempt to take the lead coming up. Well, they bought they brought Butler, but once again, Darren Howard coming off the outside, and that time they even chipped with a running back to help out, but still too much strength and too much speed. Since 1995, Washington was 5 of 19 beyond 40 yards. That's before this year. Anderson's given them the long leg. 4 of 6 from 40 or more. From 42, he missed it. Told you pregame he was missing to the right from the right hash mark. He missed that one to the left. K-State survives after the turnover. And psychologically for Kansas State, that was a monster stop. Because if Washington, as the big underdog, can get ahead, boy, I'm telling you, they really get a lot of confidence. But now Kansas State's got to settle down. Beasley especially can't do anything stupid like he did the last time and threw the ball to an open area without, without looking for the safety. Let's see if Frank, Mur Frank Murphy gets some opportunities here to run the football. First and ten. Murphy pops it outside. Six yards. Before second and four, here's Jerry Punch. Guys, it's my pleasure to be joined now by the chief executive officer of the title sponsor of this bowl game, uh, Dick Heckman, the CEO of Culligan. And Dick, I know that uh, your involvement in intercollegiate athletics has done a lot of things for your company, primarily offered you an exposure to a younger audience. It really has. We've been connected to the parents since the 1930s, and it's great to connect to the kids. They're the future of America, and this is where we want to be. Now, one of your dealers, a guy by the name of Lou Holtz, who we all know and respect, spoke at the luncheon this past week. But your dealers have gotten a lot out of your involvement with this holiday bowl. Well, there's no question about it. Lou's a great motivator being in these kind of facilities and these kind of games are great motivators for the dealers uh, we've got 1500 of them here at the game today hey Dick thank you for all you're doing for college athletics and thanks for bringing Lou and we really enjoy the lunch and we really have a lot of fun with him guys with your Dick Heckman the chairman and CEO of Culligan and by the way Lou Holtz's parting comment was next year if you're gonna be this South Carolina team you better bring your lunch <laughs> it's gonna be an all-day affair uh, good to see you coach at the luncheon thank you Jerry but when you say, hey, Culligan man, that is the Culligan right man right there. there. That there is, is the man. <laughs> One thing about Murphy, we've got to keep remembering. 
He had fumbleitis problems. Last year, they could not use him in big games because he fumbled a lot. we got to watch that as this game yep. goes on. Good point. After gains of six and seven, Murphy tries the left side this time. And he runs into Jafar Williams, the sophomore out of Oakland, California, who got his weight up this year, a strong safety type. Moved to the outside linebacker spot in the Washington defense that's coordinated by Tim Hundley, who was with New Heisel as assistants at UCLA and the defensive tackles coach at Colorado. Right now, the Kansas State offensive line doing a good job at the point of attack, getting pressure, pushing the uh, pushing the Washington front seven back and giving their running back a chance to make some moves. Second and six pass. Five out there for him. Out of the hands of Quincy Morgan, his top pass catcher. It will be third down. Very interesting when you look at the stats of this team. They don't complete a lot of passes. End of the first quarter here at the Culligan Holiday Bowl. Rick Neuheisel's team, some ups and downs. They played smart football at the start of this game. A couple of field goals, but not the third one. After one, K-State 7, Washington 6. How would you like to curl up with a nice, thick instruction manual about water softeners? Me either. Life is just a little too short. That's why Culligan created the Worry-Free Water Program. Here's how it works. They do all the work, you don't. All you do is call Culligan, and the Culligan man takes it from there. Hey, Culligan man. So don't just order a water softener. Order a Culligan man. Call Culligan, and let somebody else worry about your water. Does your family's water need a clean bill of health? Find out at Culligan.com. They're not coming out. We're going in to get them. They're always hot. They're always sweating. It's a cat and mouse game. We have some of the hottest detectives on the street to switch antiperspirants. Degree Ultra Dry. Body heat activated. Does this work? When your body heat rises, Degree's powerful Ultra Dry form releases extra protection when you need it most. When the pressure is on, the heat is on, Degree kept up with me. He kept me dry. Degree kicks back. Degree Ultra Dry. That stuff kicks in and takes care of business. Your body heat turns it on. Book them. The easiest just got easier. Introducing America Online new version 5.0 with all new features so it's easier to stay in touch and easier to get started. AOL new version 5.0. So easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Call now and we'll sign you up right over the phone. To prove the power of interstate batteries, today I'm racing the family cruiser with my family. Joe and Norm are catching a few rays and looky there, my wife's getting a full makeover. Interstate, the official battery of the family car. Flip. AT&T Double O Info, how can I help you? Um, I need a phone number. The Mystery Bookstore, outside Chicago. I don't have a clue which town. Now you can get information, even if you don't have all the information. AT&T customers, dial 00. You don't need the exact location. Found it. Great detective work. Dial 00 for any local or long distance number anywhere. Even yellow page listings. Oh, oh, it's magic. You know. Worried about Y2K? Get a new Buick. Why? Let's say the city goes dark. Buick's headlights come on automatically. Very clever. No heat, dual climate control. So get cozy in your comfy power seat with your portable TV and watch the test pattern. During Buick's Not To Worry event, get a Century 2000 Special Edition with a millennium offer worth $2,000, just in time for the year 2000. No blow dryer? Sunroof. We start the second quarter in San Diego with Dr. Jerry Punch, Kirk Curb Street, and Lee Corso, Mike Tirico. Kansas State leading Washington 7 6. This is the third offensive possession for the Wildcats. A touchdown on the first one, an interception on the second one. And to keep the punter off the field, they need to get to the 46 yard line. Three receivers on third and six. The blitzing towns in his face, but a first down to Aaron Lockett across midfield and to the 48-yard line. Jonathan Beasley with a nice throw. Keep the drive alive. The numbers after 15 minutes of play. Pretty even in the yardage department. Kansas State with four sacks helped keep Washington away from touchdowns in the field goal department. But that time of possession stat, a big one in the Pac-10 this year, continued for Washington in the first quarter. If they can continue, they'd have the ball 16 minutes more. Mm -hmm. 
State. First and ten throw for Beasley. Is caught by Quincy Morgan for another first down at the 35-yard line. Kansas State moving the ball nicely. What do you like with Kansas State's Dudley in the first 15 and a half minutes? Well, first of all, they answered Washington's field goal with mm -hmm. a touchdown. They got ahead. But the most important thing, I think, Kirk, was the fact that they stopped them having that interception because Washington had a chance to go ahead of them. Yeah, good points. I, I think if you look at Washington, the fact that they came in as a heavy underdog, playing well offensively, not hurting themselves. You saw time of possession close to 10 minutes in the first quarter, but they're allowing themselves to drive the ball and not give the Kansas State offense a short field. Make them work for what they get. Beasley's throwing the ball a little bit better on this drive. Looking right at Quincy Morgan. Take advantage of that cushion. It's another first down. It's right in front of Jermaine Smith, the cornerback from Simi Valley, California. This is nice play calling here by Ron Hudson. They had a lot of success early in this drive of just pounding Washington. It's softening up the defense a little bit. And now it allows them to get the cushion that you need. And now you start utilizing your speed with the athletic, the athletic wide receivers that you have, such as Lockett and Morgan. Morgan is 6'2", 215 from Garland, Texas, and he looked like to me from the, in a pregame warm-up like a guy who should be at Tennessee or Florida. What a good-looking athlete. After completions of 11, 12, and 11 yards. It's a first and 10. This exchange on the snap in the center. Randall Cummings, involved in the poor exchange, falls on it. Cummings, first team, all Big 12 center. What was not the mistakes that a Bill Snyder team normally makes? Well, Kirk, sometimes a quarterback will jump out of there too quick. Well, Notice that? Yep. He was leaning back. That's why he fumbled. You know why he's leaning back? He was licking his chops. He, he caught an audible at the line of scrimmage. He had man-to-man -man at the top of the screen. <laughs> He had Morgan isolated. I think he got too excited. He made the audible at the line, and then he wanted to get that ball too quick. One back. Frank Murphy, the running back in motion, takes the handoff, carrying that ball very loose. Hakeem Akbar almost knocked it free. Careful. At the 23. You have a second hand and the option to use it. The blitz side view of the 99 Holiday Bowl comes to us from the Fuji Film Blimp. But hello to Captain John McHugh and Mike Fitzpatrick at the helm along with cameraman Greg Johnson providing us the pictures of Qualcomm Stadium tonight. <laughs> Guys, Qualcomm stock was up some 20% today. Boy, am I glad you had a lot of it, Mike. Just a little pregame preparation. <laughs> an eye on those things. <laughs> Third and eight, showing a corner blitz. They back out and rush four. Pressure on Beasley. Got away from two men. Throws off his back foot out of the end zone. He send anybody down there. Martez Wesley, who only caught seven all year, was deep. It'll be a long field goal attempt for Kansas State. A lot of pressure there on Beasley. He was fortunate enough to get away from the pressure and get the ball thrown downfield, basically just throwing it away to give Reem at least a chance to put some points on the board. Now, Reem, as you know, was a finalist for the Lou Groza, which is the best kicker in America. He came in second to old Sebastian Janikowski. Somehow we're going to slide old I Sebastian. I just thought I'd mention old Sebastian Janikowski from Florida State. We went the whole first quarter without hearing about Sebastian. From 41 yards, the thunder-footed kicker from Wichita is good. Only a field goal against New Heisel's team. They now trail by four. Back in his college baseball days, John Elway would stand at the plate and try to muscle the ball over the fence. Every once in a while, he'd get one to clear the 335 mark and left, but just barely. If you figured Elway to have more power than that, you got to remember one thing. That's a pretty long throw. Expect more from an original. Original Coors. Brewed a mile high. My beer, it's got to be original. Is this a smart investment? Janice crunched all the numbers. They add up if the development opens on time. So every two weeks, Janice comes out here. Every two weeks, Janice sees how it's really going. Every two weeks, it's right on schedule. So Janice invests. The doors open on time, and Janice got in on the ground floor. Looking to build your portfolio? Get there. Janus Mutual Funds.
Club Ramada now, and every cool dip in our pool, every chill drink on our menu, every cozy night in our rooms will be even more rewarding. Club Ramada is free to join, and every dollar you spend will take you closer to great rewards like free nights, free flights, and free fun stuff for the whole family. Join Club Ramada, and earning great rewards will be easier than ever. For reservations, call 1-800-2-RAMADA or at ramada.com on the Internet. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 1999 Culligan Holiday Bowl is presented by Culligan. For all your water solutions, visit us online at culligan.com. And in part by Ramada. At Ramada, you can always expect our personal best service. One of the great areas away from San Diego, La Jolla. Herbie, you enjoyed La Jolla this week? Oh, a little dinner down there with Allison? Oh, a couple times. That's beautiful. Life is good, my Life friends. Life is good Life down in La Jolla. Good. I had my pajamas on, white <laughs> socks, 730 and sleeping, and you're going to La Jolla. Something's wrong with his picture. <laughs> you could have come out there. I didn't too, I'm too old. <laughs> Nicely let Kirk and Allison have a very That's nice right. dinner. The kickoff by Reem goes out of bounds. Washington will have good field position to start this drive. Let's take a look at Darren Howard, number 49. The first one, as he comes up to the outside, you watch him continue to pass rush, keep your eye out, and he doesn't ever give up and comes and makes the tackle. On the second one, he makes a good rush to the inside and makes the tackle. But this one's not fair. The outside rushes on over. Jeremy Stevens, number 14. And that's, <laughs> that should not count. Stevens is a tight end, 6'7", 220. That's not fair. You see some of the skills that made Howard the all-time K-State sack leader. Oh, yeah, to the air and to Gerald Harris, the junior. Good first down passing catch. Yeah, picked up about three and a half, four yards. Not a whole lot of yards there, but it's, it's a matter of spreading out the Kansas State defense. If you've noticed, when Washington has had the ball, they've controlled the tempo as opposed to allowing Kansas State's defense with all that speed and pressure to control the tempo. If they can maintain that, spread the ball here and there, and then try to hit them for a quick hitter, that's, that's, that's how you try to attack this defense. Tempo is a basketball term, but so applicable in football games, especially when one team is a big underdog. Run, run! So he has a set with Maurice Shaw. And not much. Ben Lieber led the attack. The linebacker out of Vermilion, South Dakota. First to stop him. And he play right into the Kansas State defense's hands when you give him third and not long, but medium. Third and six. You know, they, the Kansas State coaches feel that Ben Lieber next year will be the next great linebacker here at Kansas State. And the tradition here for the last few years that has been developing, look out for him in the future. Pass rush heavy from the right. Kind of the fullback. Goes airborne, and at the spot, he gets the first down. The junior out of the state of Washington, Woodenville, does the right things, the small things. If he doesn't go airborne there, he doesn't make the first down. Really showing some athleticism here early in the first half. Ability to catch the ball out of the backfield. You have to think he knew exactly where the sticks are. Ends up diving here. <laughs> You're right. If he doesn't make that dive, he comes up a little bit short. 6'1", 235. And one thing, oh, Dyshot Carter's not done. He, went after, the ankles. he went after the ankles, sweetheart. Play <laughs> action pass. They're looking for Looker. Dane Looker breaks free. To the 12-yard line. Lamar Chapman made the play. 42-yard yeah. pickup. Yeah. Longest of the year for Looker. Great play because it was a play action and throws the linebackers. But down it got Looker, number one on Chapman. He just outruns him. Kirk was a tremendous fake to stop the linebackers from dropping. A good job here. Another good call by Carl Durrell. The thing that I like here is that it's almost like a bracket coverage. They're trying to keep him a double team there with Butler, number 23, and Chapman. But Looker with the speed and a great throw by Kuyasa Soko. In the red zone, Maurice Shaw flag is down as Shaw gains a couple of yards. 
It's way too early in the game to see Wash to say Washington needs a touchdown. But psychologically, they need to find their way into the end zone and not always settle for field goal, field goal, field goal. After all, they've had the ball four times and they've been in Kansas State territory four times. Well, if you talk to Rick Neuheisel before the game and you would tell him that this is the way this game would go throughout the first quarter and a half, he would say, Hallelujah. Hey, I'll take it because they are controlling the tempo, controlling the clock, which is what their offense has been about all year long. They're they, eventually, you're right, they want to pop it in. But right now, they have to be very pleased with the way things are going. He also said one important point. If you're a big, heavy favorite and you can take them into the fourth quarter, the pressure goes on Kansas State. Sure. And that's exactly what he's trying to do. They survived that initial surge. They got into the second quarter and have an opportunity to take the lead. First and five after the offside. Toss to the freshman, Paul Arnold. Almost. I like him, boy. He is a nice-looking true freshman. Live legs. He comes in there with an opportunity to find a corner of the end zone. A little disappointed in himself. Another chance to break a tackle. He's been doing it here. First few times he had, he's had a chance to carry the ball. Remember, again, he's a true freshman. Once he gets to the outside, that's not just a, any guy he's trying to shake there. That's one of the best linebackers in the country in Mark Semino. Paul Arnold, remember that name. He's going to be a great one for the Huskies. You put Paul Arnold... And Marcus Tui has to soak on that back there. That's sure. That's a nice looking back there. There is. One for the first down. Three for the touchdown. Count it's the fullback. Touchdown, Washington. tough against a pretty good defense. Anderson the extra point. Kansas State gives up an average of 13 a game. Washington has 13 in the first 21 minutes. A simple pullback, pullback belly and Conniff does a good job of reading the blocks up the middle. Cuts to the back side. Washington believes that they can beat Kansas State right now. Hey buddy. You hear it at 743 Hickory Street. You hear it above the din. Hey, calling a man. You hear it among the quiet. It's the sound of Culligan water being delivered to your door. Get a great deal on bottled water with our exclusive web offer online at Culligan.com. He's Denver's fourth all-time leading rusher. On any given day, this back could pile up yardage, elude tacklers, and score at will. Yeah, this Denver back played his position like no one else. Did I mention he's a quarterback? Expect more from an original. Original Coors. Brewed a mile high. Coors in a yellow can. Now that's original. The finest leather boots are at Big Bill's Boots. Watch Clemson take on Mississippi State in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, live on ESPN. Heisman winner Ron Dane leads Wisconsin against Stanford in the Rose Bowl. Presented by AT&T, 4.30 Eastern. Here in San Diego, the dogs from Seattle are barking a little bit. Their fans are making noise here in Qualcomm Stadium. Pat Connors, a couple of big plays, including the final one on a very impressive drive. There they are from Seattle. Lee, a lot of noise from that side of purple compared to the Kansas State side of purple. Well, you, Mike, this is the first time in Bill Snyder's seven bowl games that the opposing team have had more people at the game than Kansas State. First time 
in seven bowl games, the other people have sold more tickets than Kansas State. What do you what do you put a tribute tattoo? Why two pet? Yeah, I'll give it to you in a second. I'll give you three reasons. Give me your stuff. Chapman first from the 17. A nice job to work it back to the middle of the field. Bernard Edwards made the tackle at the 32. Before the reasons, let's finish off that last scoring drive. Before phase two there, the K-State right, fans. Let's, all right. let's, let's look back at that scoring drive. A couple things that they were able to do. Again, they're spreading out the Kansas State defense. Play action pass here to Dane Looker. Beats the double coverage of Chapman and Butler. Then they get their fullback involved, throwing out the flat to Connick. He has the ability to pick up the first down early in the drive, and then he finishes it off. Nice belly, cuts it back, finds the end zone right now. You can feel it from up here. The crowd, the players, Washington is beginning to believe that they can play with Kansas State. Let me give you three right, reasons. Give me phase two. Number one is cost. Okay. Why 2K? They were worried about that. What Distance. And the last one, and most important, the game's on Wednesday. And a lot of people can't get off of work to come here. All right. The reasons Washington has more fans. Here tonight, the first and ten Beasley throw. Incomplete. A nice coverage. John Aaron Lockett, second team all Big 12 receiver. Second down coming up. Well, Kansas State's defense is stingy. As stingy as they come in college football. And the bottom line is points. And look right now. 13 points with 8.33 in the second quarter. Exactly at the average of what they give up per game all year. I'll give you why I think it is. And then I'll give you mine. Okay. I think it's Rick Neuheisel's mind. I will say that I agree. Thank you. Late in the year, I agree with you. It has to do with Rick Neuheisel is very, very comfortable with a nothing to lose mentality, rolling the dice an entire month to prepare for a defense. He knows how to get a team ready in this case when he's a heavy underdog. His play calling is keeping Kansas State off balance. They don't know where they're coming from. He and Carl Durrell, the offensive coordinator. This is second and ten. Oh, Beasley throws broken up. Anthony Von Tour. With a nice play, he's battling a hamstring injury. Breaks it up. Here's Jerry Punch. Guys, there is not a lot of emotion on the Kansas State sidelines. In fact, the mood is quite solemn over here. You know, these guys, though, are not prone to panic. Remember, they were down by 21 points twice this year at Iowa State and at Oklahoma State, and both times came back to win. And here, they're just down by three. But right now, I think, guys, some of these guys are a little bit shocked at how well Washington has been able to move the football. Put this down. Mark it down. Anytime Vortur can knock a pass down for Morgan on a hook pass, forget about it. He's going to go right past him tonight for a touchdown. He's a risk taker. Third and ten throw is caught by Martez Wesley, who made a great move on Vortur. To the 31. That's the man we were just talking about, Vontour. Beaten for 39 yards, the longest reception of the season for Martez Wesley. I always love to do that as a coach. I always love to do this. When a guy makes a great play as a defensive guy, he's standing around shaking and baking. I go right after him the next time, drive him deep, and then make the catch on him. But the point here, Kirk, was the great run after the catch. Well, Wesley does a good job of shaking Vontor. Von, you're going to watch Vontor. Lee, you made the point that they're going to go by him tonight. He's a guy that takes chances. Sometimes it works out. He had six interceptions. Other times, he gets exposed by taking those chances. Quarterback draw. It's just like the old single wing offense. Beasley becomes the runner and gets stuck after a pickup of about five. That's about 2.30 there, lowering his shoulder. You got to look out. He's bigging, huh? Yeah, that's the big boy there. <laughs> The big boy lowers the shoulder. You know, this is the field. This, watch this. This feels like a fullback here. Look, look at go. You know, Anthony Vontour is saying, yo, enough. You throw it in front of me, you throw it after me, and you send the guy to run over me. They can put Joe Hall in 290 pounds, <laughs> big in the backfield, to go with the quarterback, Beasley. They can get big in the backfield. Second and five, and Lassitich, the fullback, moved forward. I don't think the officials threw a flag because Lassitich could have gone in motion if he would have gone to the left. Delay of game on the offense. Five yard penalty. Kansas State froze, thinking, well, oh, that's going to be an illegal procedure penalty, but that's the back. If he would have cut left, that would have been a legal play, but obviously he had a mistaken snap count in his mind. Or he could have just stopped right there. That's right. For a full second, they're going to snap the ball. 
Four flags on KSU. One on Washington. Second and ten option. A nice cut back by Jonathan Beasley. First down, Wildcats. Both quarterbacks can run. It's a simple freeze option here by Jonathan Beasley. Once he gets down the line, he's going to attack. He's going to stretch the defense. And at this point, great job of cutting back against the grain. You can see the linebackers have over-pursued. Allows him to get back in there. Watch him feel this. He fakes the pitch. Right there, he makes the cutback. You can see all the defense overflowing. Nice job of snowing that out for the first down. The sixth play of this drive is a run to David Allen. The explosive kick returner averaged just under five yards per carry this year. He picked up six there. They use Allen, Hall, and Murphy, and between them, they averaged six, 5.6 per carry. They're a nice-looking running tandem when you put those three guys back there. Well, you put that trio together, and it's interesting because Hall is the big guy, yet he is very, very athletic. He was drafted out of high school to play baseball. I mean, he's that kind of athlete. And then you have Howard, who can do a lot of things. He can catch the ball to the backfield, and, of course, Murphy's a total package. Second and four, Allen strung out and brought down by Lester Towns, inside linebacker. ESPN's exclusive coverage of Bowl Week continues tomorrow in Atlanta. The 1999, you want to say it for me, Lee? Chick-fil-A. Peach Bowl. Tommy Bowden's Clemson Tigers. Terrific turnaround year. And the Never Say Die Bulldogs. Mississippi State, which always wins it at the end, and the Peach Bowl, which is always decided at the end, could be a perfect fit when you join us, starting with Bowl Game Night at 7 Eastern tomorrow on your home for Bowl Week, ESPN. And let me remind you, Chick-fil-A did not invent the chicken. They just invented the chicken sandwich. Yeah, is that right? That's true. Sure that's, right. that's, that's a commercial. I don't know. Okay. That's a commercial. Right. I know it. I, trouble. I do it all the time. All right. We had a penalty marker on that last play. We will go against the Huskies. Rick Neuheisel has a beef with the officials. You looking for more chicken sandwich? Listen, if you if you play your cards right, I could get us enough chicken sandwich. You'd weigh 400 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Rick doesn't like that call at all. Here comes the explanation from Robert Woods. <laughs> Illegal participation. 12 players on the field participating against the defense. It's half the distance to the goal from the previous spot and a first down. Odd to see the lengthy discussion before a 12 men on the field play. So it sets up first and goal. This has been a very nice drive from Kansas State. Lee talked about Kansas State answering early in the game. And here's another opportunity after Washington scores the go ahead touchdown. Great drive so far. Can they answer? Aaron Lockett. Pulled down by Jeremiah Farms. Lockett with the tremendous speed. His brother Kevin is the all-time leading receiver at K-State. He's now on to the Kansas City Chiefs, just a few hours away from Manhattan. Well, Kevin Lockett had the size and the hands. Aaron has the speed. That's an old Florida Gator play, but I'm telling you, maybe I'm an old-school guy. But you're on the five-yard line, yeah. and you're running 90 miles left to right. Hello, why don't they go towards that nice blue, I mean, that nice purple San Diego sign? Play like going around the block to get next door. Option. They stuck the quarterback that time. Daryl Daniels, the junior linebacker, top tackler for this Washington team, sets up third and goal. Here, third and goal. Who's me? I'd run the quarterback draw. I'd spread them all over the place. I, no backs ball. and run a quarterback draw. I, I think you're going to try to throw the ball to the left here. Maybe roll him out, get him away from you. It's empty in the backfield. Beasley throws the screen. It's Murphy. Stopped. Von Tour and Hakeem Akbar. 
field goal. That's a good stop by Washington. First and goal from the five. And Kansas State doesn't get in. That's a that's a great play that they like, but I don't like the call. The reason I don't like the call, well, that play is supposed to drive people deep and come underneath. There's no depth. I don't like that call. I don't like two of the three calls they had. I think were poor calls. That wide reverse and that play. The harsh angle from the right for the Jamie Ream field goal. Didn't miss from inside of 40 this year. And 23 blew it back. Jinx them. You keep jinxing these guys. You know, people at home believe that you jinx them. I'm, yeah. I just read the kick I stats. I don't make them up. First and goal at the five. It looked like Schneider's team was going to take the lead. New Heisel's defense stopped him. He missed it. New Heisel's Huskies still lead. Ultimate Fighting Championship presents Ultimate New Year's Eve 1999. Six hours of action, six hours of excitement, six hours of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. These are the greatest fights and the greatest fighters to ever enter the octagon. Kick off your millennium with Ultimate New Year's Eve 1999. Friday, December 31st on Direct Ticket. I hope you'll join me, Jim Laslovic, for our current edition of This Month on Sports. We'll profile some of today's top NFL linebackers and preview the upcoming ESPN full court college hoop season. Super coach Phil Jackson sits down with us to explain the famed triangle offense. And superstar Brett Hall talks about his successful transition from scoring machine to all-around standout. Plus, we'll go one-on-one -on -one with legendary sports writer Burt Sugar. So tune to Channel 212 for all the action. This Month on Sports. With the year 2000 approaching, we're trying to make sure the software here at SportsCenter is Y2K compliant. Y2K test in three, two, one. Oops. More from the NBA and an NFL trade right after this. We definitely have a few bugs to work out, but we'll be ready. Follow me. Follow me to freedom. Mike Tarico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet, Dr. Jerry Punch, San Diego, California. Eight possessions, no punts thus far tonight. The 13 10 Washington lead. Great shot, guys. Our director is Mike Schwab, our producer, Tim Corrigan. And the rest of our Thursday night crew working a Wednesday. I'm glad to be at, other than the New Year's Day bowl games, the best of the postseason games. Because of the payout, it's the richest of the non-New Year's Day bowl games. And the prestigious tradition of this game, the close games from the early days have built up this bowl game to be something special. <laughs> Lee and I were talking, we're, we're excited to be involved in it from up here. Lee's been involved in it yeah. down the field. He had a great victory here against BYU. Thank but you. It's, it's exciting to be hey. here and just be a part of this uh, this game. I, don't, I really don't want to talk about it, but 20 years ago this week, I beat, we beat the Indiana beat BYU. 38 37 and a guy hooked the field goal just like that kid just something about this place this right? spot, and that's the same spot so help me god sneaking around out there sneaking up there's a little bit of a wind or something first and ten washington they picked up simino for a moment but couldn't get away from the all-america who brings down tui asisopo for the five-yard loss <laughs> As we watch this, his left foot is planted. Mike, we talked about this a long time in golf. He's opened up too wide. Look at it. See, he's opened up too wide, mm -hmm. and that's why he hooks it to the left. That and the laces weren't completely turned there. We talked about Rick Neuheisel and how excited he is and how he's into this football game. Outside of being a competitor, he mentioned to us last night a victory in this game against an opponent like Kansas State could expedite the whole process of trying to get Washington back to the glory days of the early 90s. This is a big opportunity for the Huskies. Second down run goes nowhere. That was Willie Hurst. K-State defense being heard from before third down. Here's Chris Fowler. Well, Mike, when it comes to your alma mater, many were playing taps in Music City, but we'll have highlights at halftime of the Orangeman Rally. 
A preview of Mr. Corso's favorite bowl game, the Cats and the Dogs in Atlanta. And John and Rod will help me with this uh, bad voice here to do the NHL NBA highlights. Join us at halftime. Uh, but will it be as entertaining as when Corso and Herb Street oh, oh play name that alma mater, the hey. NBA stuff? Hey, I'll get him. We'll get him. We're in San Diego, California at Qualcomm Stadium for the 22nd Pelican Holiday Bowl. Washington leads, but faces third and 16 in a blitz. They try to beat the blitz with a run. Forget about it. Mark Simino, fourth down. One thing that's evident to me, to get a football team out of the doldrums, on defense, you got to blitz. You got to become aggressive. Now, David Allen's going to get his chance to be aggressive. They've stopped him on punt returns because they haven't forced the punt yet. But again, here's what I'm talking about. You notice, if you were about, yeah, this is more like Kansas exactly. State. This is what you expect from Kansas State, where they're Do putting it. a lot of pressure, turning them loose. A lot of times, big teams that are heavy favorites play not to lose yep. instead of to win. And all of a sudden, yo. They lose. The Kansas State fans chanting David Allen before Ryan Fleming's punch. First punch of the game. Not a good one. Trying to kick away from Allen. It will give Kansas State the ball in great field position. So even though he doesn't get his hands on the ball, the effect of David Allen is felt right there. Reminds me of Virginia Tech. When Virginia Tech has, oh. they have a tendency to put a lot of pressure on you. And even when they don't block it sometimes, just the fear factor allows a punter sometimes to shank it. Remember we were talking to Rick Newhouse and he said the one thing he's worried more about Kansas State is them scoring on a short field. Yep. He felt that if he could keep them running, driving 70, 80 yards, he could beat them. Now he's giving them 37 yards to drive. And I will bet you a percentage-wise that Kansas State will score on this drive if they got just enough time. It's 154 left. They burned a timeout earlier with two to play with. Beasley. Out of time. Looking for his man, open but incomplete. Anthony Von Tour was a step behind Aaron Lockett, but closed the gap as the ball hung up. Lockett broke free for a moment. That's a double post there by Kansas State. They've had a lot of success with it this year. Von Tour does a good job of closing. Oh, yeah. The gap between himself and Lockett gets in there. The ball hung up just a little bit. That's a good job by Vontour getting in there to knock that ball away. I'm telling you, this is first guessing, not second guessing. I'd find out where number five is, and I'd put him on old Vontour, and I'd run him up that way and see if I could beat him for a touchdown. You got it right there. Quincy Morgan on Vontour. Beasley looks left. Oh, that was an interceptable ball after the ricochet, and Jermaine Smith was thinking about six. Dangerous moment there. Well, a New Year's morning tradition. The eye opener is college game day at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, live from New Orleans. And then the Outback Bowl 2000, Drew Brees and Purdue against Quincy Carter and Georgia. You'll see it from Tampa, starting with Bowl game day presented by Outback Steakhouse at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. I can see we're going to have to take care of Chris there for the next couple yes, days with a voice. Huh? You know, I, maybe I don't know anything about football, but I'll tell you what, number five, Quincy Morgan, had three catches for 116 against Nebraska. The guy averages what? 24. 40? 24 no, no, yards he averages 48 yards every touchdown pass, yep. and they haven't thrown it to him. You got to go to him. I agree. Hello. Find number five. Martina, Martina, Mary, Martina. Great moments in college sports make great memories and often inspire great achievement beyond the game. Come see it all at the Hall, the new NCAA Hall of Champions, a place to relive the action, savor the memories, discover what it means to be a true champion, and that might be the greatest moment sports has ever produced. The NCAA Hall of Champions, opening in downtown Indianapolis in March 2000. 
Well, if it's Washington, Kansas State, Santa has to be in purple, of course. Oh, yeah. After doing a, an outstanding job for the holidays, Santa enjoying some time off before he gets back to work. What about this drive? Minute 41 left. Kansas State down by three. Well, Lee mentioned it. it. It's crucial here for Kansas State. They got the ball back, short field to work with. Now they're in third and long. It's imperative going in to halftime that they put some some form of points on the board. I would make sure that I do some pass to try to get at least close enough for a first down. But I would go for fourth down. I would go for fourth down and leave the ball here, if nothing else, and let Washington make a mistake. Because I think they got to get something on the scoreboard. I would use two downs to get this 10 yards. A couple of timeouts still left for Penn State. Again, you got the straight man-to-man -man coverage here. See if they try to go to Morgan. Washington brings a lot of pressure. They try to back. Off of Aaron Lockett. Lockett on the move and Jermaine Smith involved in man coverage. So Smith has been tested and done a nice job. He has done a good job. A very good cover man. Kind of a rub route there. You can see that Morgan gets in the way of Smith. But Smith again catches up to the receiver. The ball hangs up there. Kind of a timing route there. Gets in there and knocks it away. I'm first guessing again. I said I would not try to get that long one. I'd try to use two plays to get a first down so I wouldn't have to do this. Travis Brown punting. If there's any weakness on this Kansas State team, it's been their punting. Haven't been great this year. And they blocked it! <laughs> Washington ball at the 45. Then it came free again. I thought it was blown dead. Let's see if the possession switched. They're what unpiling them. What number? It is Washington ball, the line judge said. Now they need to have a conversation about it. Kirk, we were talking on the field before I, the game. I gotta give you, I'm gonna give you full credit, Mr. Mike Tarico. We we're coming upstairs, and he said, you know what? I think Washington has a chance to block a Kansas State punt. Why? Because of how slow, slow. How slow okay. they are. That's good. Did you have the stopwatch on him? Uh, he had the stop. He, he I did not do the Jackie Sherrill pregame stopwatch That's on the, the field. Two. Now, here's what Newheisel is saying. Did Washington ever have possession as the ball was being battled around? We saw a similar thing in the Syracuse game earlier today. K-State ball, it looks like. The punt was blocked by the defensive team. Then it was recovered by the defensive team, advanced and fumbled, and then recovered by the offense. First down. Uh, we need to see that, to see if the possession was fully attained by Washington. Well, first, you're going to see from the outside, both guys are able to get in there. Kelly, number 47, and Farms, number four. This is the question. Kelly picks the ball up for a brief <laughs> moment. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Very brief. No. Very brief. <laughs> Nope. First and ten. Kansas State gets the ball back. It's first and ten because it's a change of possession. Joe Hall, nearly 300 pounds, carrying tacklers across midfield. Will Kansas State take advantage of the opportunity here? Certainly a fortunate break. Have the block punt but retain possession. Forget the call. It's still fortunate to see another day. Key points here. Two timeouts Kansas State has. That's very important because if they use them like the pros do it, there's no question. Short pass, timeout, throw the ball over here, little run, boom. And they got a kicker named Jamie Ream who can put it through there and go in tied, if nothing else. They picked up the first down on the run. Ream has a long leg. We told you he made one. 57 earlier new was angry and still frustrated after first down and he's got to send the message to his team now to get the focus right back on the That's field right. That's right. that play is gone bad call or not and the 46 Montour blitzing off the corner can't get there and the pass is incomplete injured player for Kansas State Looks like Thomas Barnett, the right tackle. As they tend to him, we remind you that we'll go back to the studio for Chris Fowler, Rod Gilmore, Coach John Makovic. The halftime report is next. We'll look at what's happened today and look ahead to the bowl games. The slate gets busier as we get closer to New Year's Day.
And if from the sound of his voice, Kirk, our friend Chris Fowler better do a little bit of sleeping and rest what and get his think? voice right. What do you think? A hot tea? I Some think lemon? hot tea, a little lemon. Make sure you get plenty of rest because he's, honey. he's going to New Orleans, and you know how hard we work when we get to New Orleans. Oh, it's, it's oh, all business. It's all business. And you know how Chris is. Oh, he's Chris. all business. He's into the office oh, early, out of the office late. So, you know, he's to grind. He better take care of that voice. For the Washington fans who are thinking about the definition of the term possession in college football, out of the rule book, player is in possession when he is holding or controlling the ball. We saw the Washington player trying to take one step. Was he controlling? That's the question to ask yourself. He's low pressure, ball in the air, and it ends up in the hands of Randall Cummins, the center. That is a fumble on the ground and then a ball in the air that Cummins has got his hands on. There is a penalty marker down. You know, I think the line judge came in and he threw a flag, maybe thinking that Beasley threw the football. Is he going to pick it up? Yeah. Going to wave it off, maybe. Yep. Good call, Herbie. Disregard the flag. It was a fumble rather than a forward pass. 48 seconds to go. There, the, the head official, the referee, had a much better vantage point than the yeah. line judge. You can yeah. see the ball got popped loose there by Towns, number 17, getting a hand on the ball. Could I say this one more time? So first guess. Give me a first guess. First guess. What happened to number five, Quincy Morgan? They haven't thrown a ball to him yet. That was, that was a fumble, so the clock keeps moving. Yep. Two timeouts, so, right? So they have what? What? 20 seconds go here before the snap. Screen was broken up. A very nice play by Larry Triplett, the nose tackle. In the last six plays, five incompletions and a sack. And credit Washington, they could have just pouted after that questionable call. The defense comes up big three plays in a row. You know, we might look back at this series, sequence of plays here from the block point, the quick possession, the fumble recovery for Kansas State, and then the defensive stop by Washington as a big, big momentum switch in, in favor of the Huskies. Travis Brown gets the kick off. The bubble violation occurs. Right, so it's, a, it's annual, right? It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's every week. Every week. It's your call. It's my call. We got it. We got it in. We got it in. I got Sebastian Janikowski in. And you got, I got this. My, I got my halo. The halo. Okay. We We're all right. First half was a good half. Can't be within two yards of the man ready to catch the punt. And if you aren't with us for our dozen Thursday night yeah. games, in 11 of the 12 Thursday night games okay, this year, we had a halo violation. Yep. 11 of the 12. That's good. I'd like to take full credit for that. <laughs> Lee and I, we, we, we gave a little demonstration. <laughs> In the booth. Almost took him down. Rough him up. <laughs> ACC officials tonight. We have offsetting fouls. Uh. Offsides on the defense. Violation of the two-yard halo on the offense. Penalties offset. Replay the down. <laughs> it's one of the other things we brought to the Thursday night games. Plenty of flags. Yes. <laughs> we set a world record one time in Starkville, Kentucky and Mississippi oh, State. I think yeah. we had, what was it? How many we have down there? You guys had way to, too many that Close night. to 30 down there. 32. Two. Thank you, Timmy. Up the middle, they almost got to the kicker again. They throw a flag. It should be running into the kicker, not roughing him. Time has expired in the first half. A play cannot, a half cannot end on a defensive foul. Kansas State should bring the offense out and throw a Hail Mary. To number five, Quincy Morgan. Absolutely. Five yard penalty running into the kicker. No time on the clock. It is what is known in the rule book as an untimed down. Exactly. And they have nothing to lose to try to throw the ball as far as they can in the end zone. They could get a pass interference, 15-yard penalty, and kick a field goal. Mm -hmm. Just make sure that is the official ruling. Uh, you want to take the... Five-yard penalty for running the kicker is declined. Half is over with. Why? That's the end of the 
Unless I misread the rule, that's a mistake. It's halftime at the 1999 Culligan Holiday Bowl. Pretty good game. Our score, Washington 13, Kansas State 10. Now the halftime report. Here's Chris Fowler. Chris? Well, Mike, thank you. If things keep up like that, old Robin Wood, the referee, his voice is going to sound like mine by the end of the night with the, with the calls and the long explanations. But Washington, give them credit. They're, they're hanging in there. Yeah, this has been the most physical Washington team I've seen all season long. And one play stands out for me. On the goal line, when they were going for the touchdown, they slammed it in there with an isolation play. Took the fullback, bang, in there, right with the tailback behind him. That, to me, says that they feel that they can be a physical team. The question is, can they sustain it in the second half? Well, they're off to a good start. And it's not hard to figure out why Kansas State struggle at times during the year. Defensively, they play well, but Jonathan Beasley is totally inconsistent tonight. He's all over the place. And I know Lee Corso's wondering, why doesn't he throw to this man and that man? I don't think he sees anybody. This game is going real fast for him. He has been better in the second half of games, and K-State has not allowed a single point all season long in the third quarter. So keep that in mind. They're a good comeback team. Coming up on our halftime report, we'll take a look back at the rally by the Syracuse Orangemen this afternoon and look ahead at tomorrow's two ball games, the Peach and the Humanitarian. That's straight ahead. A beer with that on it. Sink your teeth into a frost brewed Coors Light. Stop by Circuit City and save during our year end sale. You'll find hundreds of markdowns throughout the store. All TVs 32 inches and larger, camcorders and appliances are on sale. All home audio loudspeakers, car audio, and mini systems are on sale too. There's never been a better time to save on great brands like JVC, Iowa, Hitachi, Panasonic, and more. You'll save on the best top brands throughout the store at Circuit City's year-end sale. This isn't about making medicine. It's about making money. Janice analyzed this pharmaceuticals company within an inch of its life. Diagnosis? A good investment, if their new drug was approved. So Janice had independent doctors double-check the company's research and confirm the drug's potential. Janice invested, the drug was approved, and Janice owned a little piece of every pill. Feeling financially healthy? Get there. Janice Mutual Funds. This halftime report is presented by Visa. It's everywhere you want to be. And by Bex, a beer apart. And welcome back. Husky is trying to pull the upset, lead Kansas State at the break by a field goal. Well, it's always a big question in bowl games. Motivation. Does a team want to play? Do they treat the bowl game as a reward or a consolation prize? You had reason to doubt in the case of Syracuse and Nashville. They lost four of the last five games, including a game to Rutgers. And they fell behind Hal Mummy's Kentucky team early this afternoon in the Music City game. Mummy and his offense look good in the early going as Dusty Bonner, who's had a fine season, goes to James Whalen. Record setting tight end caught 90 passes this season, most ever for a tight end. Early going, he was unstoppable. But then a dislocated elbow out of the game, and Kentucky would struggle. And then James Mungro would get it going. Look at Mungro busting free. He'll get caught from behind here, but an 86 yard run would set up Kyle Johnson's two yard touchdown run cut Kentucky's lead to 10-7. And then, late in the game, Kentucky will let Mungro high step into the end zone to get the ball back to have one final chance. But Keith Bullock and the Syracuse defense able to stop that drive in Kentucky territory. And the Orangemen rally for a really nice come from behind 20-13 victory. And you could not question Syracuse's motivation in this game as they rallied. And Kentucky was certainly hurt by Whalen's absence there. So well, Whalen's absence had a big impact on Dusty Bonner and the passing game uh, as it was Kentucky still passed for 308 yards in the game but zero touchdown passes and that was one of the strengths of Syracuse coming in they had only given up 10 touchdown passes throughout the year so they stuck in there they hung in there they waited for their chances did you know I once ran 87 <laughs> yards uh, scoring 
one yard longer than Mungro, but I did score. Yeah, <laughs> they didn't get it done, though. They were a lot slower defenses back then, I guess. Much slower. <laughs> but, you know, Kentucky really had a chance to win this ball game. They really dominated the first half. They just did not put Syracuse away. They were up 10 to nothing in the first half. Could have gone in for a touchdown, didn't get a touchdown, and then had a blocked field goal. And that led to Syracuse turnaround, and in the second half, the Syracuse defense slammed the door shut, only gave up 95 total yards in the second half. That's playing some aggressive defense. I agree, and the trend continues. Good defense, poor field goal kicking in this game. They had three field goals blocked in the game as well. Now, tomorrow in the evening, it's the Peach Bowl, Mississippi State and Clemson. But in the afternoon, the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl, two very good offensive teams. Two defenses that are going to be challenged tomorrow. Louisville give out 30 points a game. And Boise State, a team that's playing on its home field in this bowl game, where it didn't lose, it was 7-0, scored 51 points per game in the last three. For a preview to Wayne Larrabee and Randy Wright. Guys? Very little evidence of global warming in Idaho. The Boise foothills provide a wintry backdrop for the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl, featuring the Louisville Cardinals from Conference USA and the Boise State Broncos out of the Big West on the famous blue turf of Bronco Stadium. Hi, everybody. Wayne Larravee along with Randy Wright. It's great to have you with us, and we expect quite a ball game here tomorrow. Quarterbacks come to the fore in this one. Matter of fact, the two quarterbacks in this game were their conference's offensive players of the year. Wayne, not only have they had outstanding seasons, but they've got very good careers. Chris Redman from Louisville comes in over 12,000 yards passing, one of only three quarterbacks to ever throw for over 12,000 yards, along with 84 touchdowns. Bart Hendricks from Boise State split time his first two seasons, took over the quarterbacking reins fully by himself this year, 43 touchdowns, a better runner as he has rushed for eight touchdowns this year alone. Well, we should have quite a ball game here. You know, the short history of this bowl game has been one of high-scoring, entertaining football. We expect more of the same this year. Now, for a preview of the Peach Bowl, let's head over to Atlanta and Dave Barnett. Circuit City Bowl week moves into Atlanta for what is year in, year out, the most closely contested postseason game, the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Penn State and Texas A&M can battle it out over which is the true linebacker you, but in the 90s, Clemson can stake a claim to the title. The Tigers have produced four All-Americas this decade, beginning in 90 and 91 with LeVon Kirkland, joined in 91 by Ed McDaniel. Anthony Simmons, a three-time All-America in the middle of the decade, and this year, Keith Adams joined the group after leading the nation in tackles and stops behind the line. When you look at that group, they're fairly diverse, all sizes, all shapes, even all different temperaments, but they have to have something in common. What is it? They do have something in common, David. They are like heat-seeking missiles with uncanny instinct closing to the football, but having the capacity to avoid blockers themselves while doing it. That's tough to do. Keith Adams led the nation. You're right, Dave. 16 tackles every time he takes the field, 33 tackles for loss. Those are incredible numbers. Now, what that kind of performer does is it forces the offensive coordinator for the opponent to actually change blocking schemes, to alter things so that you get a blocker on a guy like Adams every play, or he'll make every single tackle. That's the impact. Clemson's wide open offense has gotten the headlines this year. The name we call more than any other in the Peach Bowl could well be that of Keith Adams. Back to the studio. All right, guys, coach making a patriotic statement with that tie right yeah, there. Yeah. Meanwhile, the Clemson offense trying to make a statement. The Tommy Bowden spread against the very entertaining, quirky defense of Joe Lee Dunn of Mississippi State, coach. You know, Jackie Sherrill loves Joe Lee Dunn. The reason that he says he loves him is because Joe Lee puts his people into position to do the things. This will be a great chess match, as uh, Kirk Herbstreet likes to always talk about, offense versus defense. Now, if you're Clemson, give up on the run because uh, Mississippi State gives 1.8 yards per carry. I wouldn't worry about that too much. <laughs> the bad news about passing, they're fourth in the nation in pass defense. So it's going to be a tough day for Clemson. I love that matchup. Meanwhile, the humanitarian bowl, just forget about defense in that one. <laughs> Both these offenses look, look able just to move the ball well, at least on paper. Yeah, I think you're right. And everybody talks about Chris Redman, but there's more to Louisville than just that man. There's also Frank Moreau. He's an all-around back. He's the guy who really helps out Redman. Almost 1,300 yards on the ground, 38 receptions, 17 touchdowns. So when Chris Redman is back there throwing the ball and everybody's talking about first-round pick, watch Frank Moreau as well. Put an asterisk on my statement, though. If you get those flurries and the wind starts whipping around there in <laughs> Boise in late December, maybe it will be more of a defensive game than we think.
Meanwhile, a couple of stories involving superstar players. First, the bad news for Stanford. Trey Walters has a wrist injury. He will not play in the Rose Bowl against Wisconsin. The Bolitnikoff Award winner is the top receiver in the country. Had 1,500 yards almost receiving. He will not play in the game. They lose their best offensive weapon. And Penn State's LeVar Arrington, at least his mother, has announced, if he hasn't quite officially announced it, that he'll bypass his senior year in Happy Valley and head to the NFL draft after that dominant performance last night in the Alamo Bowl victory over Texas A&M. We will come back at halftime. We've got some uh, highlights ahead. And also uh, talk more about the second half of this game. On a big fourth down run, Frank Murphy set up K-State's only touchdown of the first half. But Washington has the three-point lead. A chunky Super Bowl moment. Terrell Davis's mom filled him up right with Campbell's Chunky Classic Chicken Noodle. It's loaded with chicken and vegetables and now bigger noodles. Terrell devoured his Chunky Chicken Noodle and then devoured the defense. There has never been anything like The Sopranos on TV. The greatest work of American popular culture of the last quarter century. Groundbreaking. Brilliant. A phenomenon. Engrossing. First class. Four stars. Perfect. A masterpiece. What's that, a threat? No, Tony, it's a rave review. How are you feeling now? Good and fine. Back at work. <laughs> Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. <gasps> Thank you. There are some great stories, some great video moments. The Sports Century is counting out of the top 50 athletes. You can watch the marathon from 50 all the way down to Babe Ruth at number two and Michael Jordan at number one beginning Thursday, 7.30 Eastern time on ESPN2. All mics open. John and Rod, you guys get to audition. We've got NBA highlights. It's the heat and the magic here. Oh, Chris Gatling, pump fake in the baseline, slams it home with a dunk. Now it's the magic's. Darrell Armstrong, he feeds a nice alley-oop to Abdul Wahoo. He's made it in there. <laughs> Miami ball now. Your turn, Rod. Anthony Carter. Don't give him an open look. What's he gonna do? Nail it. Tied at 46. And Just then before halftime on. Yeah, exactly. And then Deshaun Leonard. Leonard, Dwayne Coswell. Oh, he stuffs it home. Well, Orlando and Miami. It's now gone to the third quarter, 71-69. The Heat have the lead. We'll keep you posted. Pacers and the Hawks. John, go. Here we go. Hawks up one second quarter. Jimmy Jackson here feeds Lorenzo Wright. He goes in. Another slam dunk. Lots of dunk in the NBA tonight. In the third quarter, Reggie Miller. He's open. He's back shooting. He's got his eye again, fellas. That's a three-pointer. Who's this? Rep by Mark, 11. Mark Jackson. Rick Smith down the middle of the lane. Dunking it home. Muscle in there, Rock, because John's going to hog it out. He's going to hog it all. ball. <laughs> Jalen Rose, Jalen Rose to Dale Davis, baseline. I tell you, you can, anybody can score from three feet. If you'd have been a guard, nobody would have ever gotten the ball in basketball. John, one sixteen eighty nine. The Pacers lost Fox forty to ten margin in the third quarter of that game. Keep going. How about some college hoops here? Let's talk about the Hornets and Bucks for two oh, yeah. game now. Six seconds to go. Charlotte with the lead, a five-point bulge in the last minute for the Cavaliers over the Wizards. Yeah, with Brevin Knight, a man from Stanford. Stanford, there you go. It's good. Keep going. Bulls and Pistons, the hapless Chicago team, stumbling along at 2-23 and, and trailing at the break. 42-31, and the Grizzlies up on the jab, 27-24. Layden no longer there. We come back, can't wait to see how you do college basketball. That's coming up <laughs> next at halftime. <laughs> Well, I got news for you. The greatest names in professional wrestling history are on direct ticket. The incredible Hulk Hogan. What could be better? The Road Warriors. Oh, no, we're a little different. 
just a little. Vern Gagne, Nick Bockwinkle, Bobby Heenan. A brilliant one, Heenan. And many more wrestling legends. It's the best of classic AWA Wrestling Volume 3. Don't miss a brand new episode playing this month on Direct Ticket. That's the best of classic AWA Wrestling Volume 3 on Direct Ticket. Bring the action home with ESPN Full Court, the ultimate college basketball package no die-hard hoops fan can live without. With up to 30 games each week, you'll get to watch your favorite teams and conferences no matter where you live. ESPN Full Court, it's maximum college basketball. To order, call DirecTV at 1-800-GET-SPORTS. Now, Sports Center follows the game, the Battle of Florida, the Heat versus the Magic, the very polished professional highlight presentation of Dan Patrick and Stuart Scott following the second half from San Diego. But you guys aren't doing too bad, help me out with a bad voice, so let's pick it up with college basketball. It's Temple and Wisconsin. You know you expect an oh, yeah. ugly, low-scoring defensive game when Bennett and Cheney get together. All right, first half, Wisconsin up 6-0. Bryant, second three-pointer of the game, badges up by nine. Yeah, and they're playing a little more than football out there in Badger land here. Lynn Greer, long, nice turnaround jumper. It looks Temple like football sometimes. Yeah, it does. It does. A lot like it football. does. Oh, but look, Ray, Roy Boone outside, another three-pointer, leaving them all alone. Wisconsin, 7 of 15 from behind the three-point line. Having no trouble with the matchup zone and leading by 21 with nine minutes to play in that game in Madison. Syracuse, they win in football. Uh, they win in basketball. 90 to 69 over Hartford. It's a mismatch. The Orangemen still are undefeated. Ohio Ooh. State and American. Yeah, 18th rated Ohio State looking good. Big Ten has a couple of teams, 79-43. Best game of the day was an overtime game as Villanova storms from 15 points down to beat Bradley in overtime. Consolation of a tournament game there. This is a double overtime game, John. You're all Wake Forest. Yeah, the Deacons, two time, two overtimes here. Dave Oldham, what a really an outstanding coach down there. They'll, they'll be back again this year. 17 for Robert O'Kelly. Oh, no. I'm afraid for the NHL. Here we go. Bruins and Devils. Uh oh. Sergei Samsonov, shot blocked by Martin Brodeur, but Andre Savage scores off the rebound to tie the game. Bruins and Devils deadlocked at two apiece. I didn't have a lot of faith in the pronunciation well of the hockey game. I don't know what a hockey puck looks like. 3 3 with 10 minutes to go in the third period there. Capitals win in overtime 3 2 over the Penguins. Toronto and the Islanders now. Mm -hmm. Igor Korolev. Korolev. Yes, Igor Korolev. Sergei Barrett. Sergei. Sergei. <laughs> <laughs> hockey. First goal, the Leafs draw first blood. It's been a low-scoring game on the island now in the third period. Still 1-0 in the Senators. A 3-1 lead after two periods over the Canadians. Rangers against the defending Stanley Cup champions, and the Stars continue to struggle. Rangers, a couple quick goals, two-zip midway in the first period. Flames score first, a one-zip lead in the first period. Avalanche, a one-zip lead midway first period at home against the Los Angeles Kings. We are coming back the second half. Shortly. And see, nice job, you guys. 13 10 Huskies over the dogs. A significant discovery in eye health may be lutein, a nutrient found in these healthy foods. Now, Centrum has the only leading multivitamins with lutein to help maintain your precious sight. Centrum, Centrum Silver, now more complete with lutein. Hello? John, Larry here. Yes. Yes, Larry, I got your facts. And, you know, I had some interesting ideas about that very proposal. I was thinking, uh... John, are you there? Is your dandruff sending the wrong signals? Get Selsen Power. Doctors recommend Selsen Blue. So don't send the wrong signals. Get Selsen Power. You'd think that after nine exhausting months of teaching, Emma Browning would be tired of classrooms. But Emma is just one of hundreds of Northwest teachers who return each summer to the University of Washington for special programs that challenge, teach new techniques, and improve personal skills. So the teachers like Emma, in turn, can make education more meaningful to all our children. The University of Washington, who benefits our community and the future. Cool. Oh, oh, one champion. 
Celebrate ABC's Super January with the BCS. Wisconsin meets Stanford in the Rose Bowl, presented by AT&T. Alabama faces Michigan in the FedEx Orange Bowl. Number three, Nebraska battles number five, Tennessee, in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. And number one, Florida State meets number two, Virginia Tech, for the national championship down in New Orleans in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Oh, oh, And, of course, one of the many compelling storylines in the Noki Sugar Bowl game, the matchup between the quarterbacks, 27-year-old junior Chris Winkie for Florida State and 19-year-old redshirt freshman Michael Vick for the Hokies, who a year ago at this time was just carrying a clipboard around and, and trying to learn the position. Now, after 10 games in college football, he's trying to be a freshman quarterback and lead his team to the national championship. But Vick, with his talent, certainly has the ample respect of Bobby Bowden and the Seminoles. Vick? Gosh, I mean, you might play it perfectly, and that son of a gun escape. And if, once he escapes, it's awful. It, uh, it ain't fair. It's illegal when he gets downfield. He's so dangerous. I think we have to go out there and, and set the tone in some kind of way, you know. It's somebody in the team has to go out there, you know, and, and make a big play, you know, early in the game, you know, and, and, and see how they react from it. You know, I think that's, that's very important also, important also you know, whether it's me, Sharon, you know, one of the receivers, you know, if somebody's making a great block, I think we have to set the tone in some way, form, or fashion. And to see Michael Vick play in person, especially from the field level, is to truly appreciate his poise, his you know, command and control. He was very uh, confident, calm at the Heisman ceremony. He impresses you. You just wonder if he can maintain that in the atmosphere of the Superdome against that Seminole defense. You know, I, I've been impressed with him, and I don't think he's going to be too unnerved by the atmosphere there. What I think he needs, though, is early in the ball game. I think he needs to make a play running down the field. We've seen games this season when he gets off early with a run, a scramble, he's a very confident quarterback. I think Florida State will try to keep him in the pocket and take that away from him and make him a drop-back quarterback, and that might unnerve him if he can't run around a little bit. I don't think they'll unnerve him. I think this young man is for real. 19 years old, he really has great poise. But as I listened to Bobby Bowden and what's going on earlier today, he said, you want to talk about hungry, we're hungry too. And I hear all the things that I almost get the impression that Florida State is the underdog in this game. Well, both sides would want to like to claim the underdog status. Of course, Florida State is the clear favorite. Can't wait to get down to New Orleans and check out that ball game. Meanwhile, in the second half here, an upset brewing as one of the biggest underdogs of the bowl season, Washington leads at the break. Yeah. Shocked? Washington, a little bit surprised mm -hmm. that it's gone so well. Washington has to maintain their patience, which, which they've done. Look for more of Joe Hall in the second half, running right at Washington and Adam Helmet quarterback. I think you're right about that, and I think that for Washington, what they need to do is they've got to make sure they move their defensive line. They're going to get pounded, so they've got to move them and attack, get into the, the backfield. They can make some plays. Wow, you'd make the change of quarterback. Pull out Beasley and put in Adam Helmet quarterback. Uh, maybe not so. right away, but very quickly if he doesn't do something. All right, we're going to see what happens here, whether the game plan for Newhouse continues to work. We get back out to the second half and what looks like a, a very interesting halftime show out there at Qualcomm Stadium and Mike Tirico. Yes, Chris, it is the Culligan Holiday Bowl Halftime Show presented by Sempra Energy. And some imitations of two great stars, an imitator of Diana Ross and an imitator of Tina Turner with her version of the Tina Turner classic, Take You Higher. Terrific halftime show, part of the tradition of the Holiday Bowl. Kansas State gets the ball when the second half starts after this. Welcome back to ESPN's exclusive presentation of Circuit City Bowl Week. A little upset brewing in part because of Marcus Tuiasasopo, just two incompletions in the first half. 
Washington didn't make many offensive mistakes even though they were pressured the all time leading sack man of Kansas State Darren Howard had two and a half of the team's five sacks in the first half they come out of the locker room Kansas State to get the ball trailing by three starting the third quarter. Welcome back Mike Tirico Lee Corso Dr. Jerry Punch Kirk Herbstreet all here and ready for what should be a really good second half. I think Bill Snyder got his team off the field and didn't try to go to the Hail Mary. He was just so annoyed with the way his team played at the end of the first half. Look ahead to the second half for me now. Lee. Well first of all I think Kansas State's playing too much of a grab bag offense a little this a little that. They haven't established anything. I think they need to establish the running game play action and if they don't throw the ball to number five Quincy Morgan more I don't know what's the matter with them. The well, guy averages how many yards per they're gonna get touchdown? It to him. 48. They're, they're going to get it to him. We, 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 he's the, one of the best receivers in the country. Yeah. you got to look at Washington and give them a lot of credit because I think they came into this football game expecting to win. They're not dazzling everybody with great numbers. In fact, they're down in a lot of those numbers, but they've been very efficient, and the key that Rick Neuheisel said is that we don't want to give Kansas State a short field. And so far, they have not. For the most part, you look at the stats, and you will notice a few things. One is that Kansas State's dominant defense has not been as dominant. Yeah, sure, in the run they have, but Washington has 133 yards. The time of possession balanced out in that second quarter. Washington was big on Kansas State in the first quarter. That changed in the second. Watch out for that Kansas State pressure. 31 sacks this season, five in the first 30 minutes. Marcus Tuiasosopo, who's added a new dimension to this offense, the ability to add option to a Rick Neuheisel offense. You know, Washington has just cranked out NFL quarterbacks over the years. Go back to Kerry Conklin and on to include Heward and Brunel and company. And it's been a terrific run. The second half kickoff. They've been keeping it away from David Allen. And it's taken by Quincy Morgan. Had a good kick return in the first half. Gives Kansas State good starting field position in the second half. Their own 34. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, at halftime, Kansas State head coach Bill Snyder talked about the fact that this team looks like a team that hasn't played football in 40 days and we're not executing offensively. We're completely out of sync. He said, you know, we wanted to be more balanced. We were in the first half. We ran the ball 19 times and we passed the ball 17 times. But in the second half, to move the football, we may have to become a little unbalanced and throw the ball a little more to get some points. Jerry, you talk about the timing and the layoff. Both teams had the equal 39-day layoff before today. Nobody played the conference championship game to shorten the break. Beasley, quarterback draw. A couple of yards against the defense. Kansas State, which runs for 185 per game, had 68 running in the first half. I think one of the things you're going to see, because Jonathan Beasley just doesn't seem to be on track here early in the, the, the first, uh, first half of the game, Ron Hudson, the offensive coordinator, in my mind, is going to try to go back to the game plan and see what he can do as far as getting Beasley in his comfort zone. Quarterback draw, rolling him out, whatever Beasley feels most comfortable with, I think that's what you're going to see called here. And that means he's going to be throwing the ball quite a bit in the second half. Three receivers to the top for second and six. Beasley looks that way and hits Quincy Morgan. A great move by Morgan. He's still going. Taken out of bounds at the 20 feet. 25 by Jermaine Smith. All right, sweethearts. This is a little bit better. The guy's one of the great receivers in the country, and you don't throw him the ball. He's got tremendous speed. Now, watch the way this works is he's going down. They run a little curl route. After he catches the football, he flies by those guys, and Lowe has no chance to get the ball. This guy, Kirk, is a game breaker. Like Peter Ward, you right. gotta find ways to get the ball to him. Well, he's a guy that we talked about at the beginning of the game. He's a difference maker. He's one of the speedsters for Kansas State. You have to get him the ball, and obviously they've been trying. That's the first time they were able to break him out. After a 38-yard pickup, they run big Joe Hall. Trying to bounce it outside. He doesn't have the speed to do that. Mac Tui Aiea, senior out of Los Angeles. A little of the Qualcomm Stadium turf in his face mask. I think if you're Kansas State, I, I can understand trying to mix in some runs here and there, but I think one of the ways to attack Washington is maybe you get in that shotgun, you try to go at him with a fast break offense, you throw the football effectively. That's one of the things that killed the Huskies this year. They don't put a lot of pressure on quarterbacks and they give up a lot of yards through the air. Option left, the keep by Beasley. First down, Kansas State. 
Free safety Curtis Williams made the tackle 18 yards after the line of scrimmage. When Beasley takes this option, you can tell right away, you can see his shoulders almost turn where he knows exactly what he's going to do. Right about there, he's going to lower the shoulder and he's going to pick up as many yards as possible. Now, he's a big quarterback, but don't be surprised. He's got some pretty good speed. Not Michael Bishop's speed, but good enough speed to pick up some yards. Number one, 81, Kurt Ward, a tight end, made a great block on the man who was assigned to Beasley. Tremendous block by number 81, Nick Warren. Washington had 10 players on the field and is forced to take a timeout. Kansas State driving, trying to retake the lead. Hey, buddy. Hey, Colgan Man. You nice hear it at 743 Hickory so Street. You hear it above the din. Among the quiet. It's the sound of Culligan water being delivered to your door. Get a great deal on bottled water with our exclusive web offer online at Culligan.com. about a Wendy's classic double with cheese. I'd have made the same choice. It's hamburger bless. Mm -hmm. This is the face of erectile dysfunction. So is this. And this. Fact is, one in three men have some form of ED, a medical condition also called impotence that affects men of every age, race, and background. What else do all these men have in common? They all faced up to their problem and got help. If you're experiencing ED, there's no need to hide your face. Just talk to your doctor. It's the best way to get educated about ED and how to treat it. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 1999 Culligan Holiday Bowl is presented by Culligan. For all your water solutions, visit us online at Culligan.com. And in part by Sun Microsystems. We're the dot in dot com. Downtown San Diego, in the gas lamp district, uh, down the road to La Jolla, up La Costa, the whole area. Just wonderful. Kansas State enjoying its second trip to the Holiday Bowl. In double checking with the officials, that was an official timeout, not a charged timeout. So each team remains with three timeouts, although it has not been changed on the scoreboard yet. It is first and ten for Kansas State. The play clock's at five. They are befuddled. They get the playoff. It's a Beasley run. Touchdown! Whatever they didn't know, it didn't matter. job by Jonathan Beasley you see L Roperson there he's a the true freshman quarterback with a love was being redshirted right there to congratulate his fellow quarterback now see if Jamie Ream can come on to add the extra point 41 of 43 this year and the KSU lead is four. Kansas State made a great adjustment at halftime by bringing the tight end, number 81, Warren. 81, Warren will come down. Watch you block Lester Towns right now. Towns was supposed to play, take Beasley, but Warren made the nice block on him. That's why that play worked. Picking up big yardage here, running with Beasley. 
here they are on the shotgun, and this time, nice steal block on the inside by the left guard and the left tackle. Now they get a kick-out block here by Robertson, but right there, the corner, Smith, needs to do a better job of having contained to the quarterback. He clearly went to the outside, and Beasley cut underneath that for the touchdown. You see it is 16-13. Both teams had run off the field, but there was a flag that was unaddressed, and it was holding on Kansas State on the try. So it becomes a 30-yard extra point for Reed. And he missed one extra point from 35 yards this year. Gets that one. Snap was a little high. Nice job by Ronsick, the backup punter, to get it down. So Kansas State leads 17-13. Two minutes in, a very good job in the opening drive here in the third quarter. Well, the overhead pictures of Qualcomm Stadium tonight coming from a familiar site over stadiums throughout the U.S., the Fujifilm Blimp joining us here tonight. Bring us the blimp's eye view of the 99 Holiday Bowl. Stadium remodeled to get to 71,000 capacity. Home of the baseball Padres and the football Chargers. The Padres have a new downtown stadium coming up in a couple of years. This facility certainly has been great for football. All the holiday bowls, a couple of Super Bowls, and will host another Super Bowl in about four years. Kansas State went 66 yards in five plays, and Beasley had three runs for 32 yards, one pass for 38 yards. He took over, but it's a nice adjustment by Rod Hudson, the offensive coordinator from Kansas State. That's coaching right there, Kirk, when you can come out and establish something that good. And it's amazing how quickly they scored. That's been something they have done a lot this year, is having the big play offense and being able to strike quickly. And right away, you can tell that Rod Hudson and his offensive coaches got together at halftime and said, let's go back to what we, we do best and that's attacking. Now we'll, now we'll see if Washington can counter. That was no grab back. That no, was no. establishing something we talked about. That was smart play by coaches by Kansas State's staff. Jamie Ream kicks it off. Joe Jarzinka started the first half with a nice kick return. Great coverage by Kansas State that time. Terrence Newman was there first. The reserve defensive back out of Salina, Kansas with the hit. Marcus Tuiasa Sopo didn't have a huge first half from a numerical standpoint, but he did have a very efficient first half. He was 8 of 10 for 113 yards here on the triple option. He takes it down to the second phase, picks up some big yards. He's been pressured throughout the first half. Five sacks, but he's been able to get away from a lot of the pressure. Also on play action, here he finds Dane Looker to set up a touchdown. Marcus Tuiasa Sopo has got to play very well here in the second half to keep the Huskies in this ballgame. An offside kickoff penalty is whistled on Bill Snyder's team, and Snyder's out to personally ask Robert Wood, the official, about it. Now those are mistakes that just eat at Bill Snyder. The holding on the extra oh. point try, offsides on the kickoff. Ooh. And Bill Snyder is so detail-oriented. At Kansas State practice, not, no, not a once a week, every day, there are six cameras videotaping the practice. That happens in a lot of places. But Snyder walks around, takes notes, has one of those little tape recorders in his hand, and will say messages into the tape recorder. After practice, he will dictate what he has said in the tape recorder and will make out notes to the position coaches and, and the coordinators them <laughs> yeah. as they go along. Observations he made in practice Every detail in this program, soup to nuts, is covered by Bill Snyder. From stretching to going through one-on-one -on -one drills to doing, uh, you know, position groups all the way up to the scrimmaging in a practice, sometimes up to seven or eight pages per practice. <laughs> Paul Arnold gets to the 24, so the offside penalty cost him five yards. My favorite thing about Bill Snyder is the fact they even practiced the medical staff when a kid is hurt and putting themselves in a position so that the television cameras can't see what's in the kid's injury. Is that, is that something different That's attention to detail. I would say so. You know what? Some people who are never afforded the opportunity of getting close to this program and seeing what it's about take that the wrong way. <laughs> From the 24, Tuiasa Soko. Got away from Simino, the All-America linebacker. And the pass was incomplete, intended for Chris Jurgens. They got a late hit here on Kansas State. Then Lieber looks like he came in a little bit late and hit Tuiasa Sopo. 
the flag a snap the last four. Washington going to catch another break here. This will be 15. Roughing the pass on the defense. 15 yards for the first down. Robert Wood, the referee, the one who throws the flag. Well, once he avoided the first rush, you can see Lieber comes right through yeah. and obviously hits Tuiasa Sofa a little bit late. Clearly, the ball's gone. Didn't look as bad there in slow mo. It never does. And in super slow mo, it really doesn't look that bad. Sixth flag on Kansas State. Dane Looker is the man in motion. And the handoff goes to Maurice Shaw, the senior from Sacramento who started the game. And the running yards are tough to come for Washington right now. Let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, at halftime in the Huskies locker room, the Washington offense very well aware of the fact that Kansas State has pitched a shutout the entire year in the third quarter. And also the fact that they have been outscored themselves in the third quarter. The third quarter has not been very good for Washington. It's been awfully good for Kansas State. Now, head coach Rick Newhouse says, we have got to block number 42. If we get number 42 off his feet, we'll score a touchdown. Simino is that good an athlete. There is the All-American senior from Smith Center, Kansas. Offside on Darren Howard. A free play for Tuiasa Sopo. Ooh, he got licked. The ball came out. Hope Tuiasa Sopo's okay. He took a heavy shot. Got the helmet turned sideways on that hit. He says, free play maybe for you. <laughs> Mixing up the snap count. You see a lot of Experienced quarterbacks. His dad yeah, probably taught him that. Now. That could be offsides on the defense, holding on the offset. They offset. You know, repeat the down. Manu Tuiasosopo used to hit quarterbacks with that fear. And there's one thing I've noticed now. Yeah. That's the offside play. But you notice Kansas State's defense has come out and start hitting people. Yep. Even if it was a penalty, they're hitting somebody. You can almost, again, we, yeah. we talk about momentum in college football all the time, and early, you can feel Kansas State with a different attitude here in this second half. Gerald Harrison motion. Here comes a whole bunch of purple shirts. Tuiasa Soko gets rid of it, and the double coverage was there. Kansas State's defense is building and building. They come out of the locker room better than anybody else. This is one of the reasons why. Phil Bennett, their defensive coordinator, who came here from Oklahoma, made some adjustments to this defense, and this unit has performed as well as any other in the country. We had a tragic story about Phil Bennett. His wife, Nancy, in August, was, was struck by lightning while she was jogging and died. And remember how he said that brought the, the team together and Bill Snyder and everybody came to his help to raise his children? That was a tremendous story about Phil Bennett. There they are. That's his son, yeah. Sam. Brought Maddie up there as well. One of the heartbreaking stories in all of sport this year. We'll get into it a little bit later. Third and ten. Incomplete. Kansas State wanted offensive pass interference. Chris Jurgens was just trying to get toward the ball, but a three and out from Bennett's defense will force a Washington punt. And Kansas State this year, 56% of the time this year three and out and I believe if I'm not mistaken this is their first three and out of the game of the game I think so Marty Aronoff Hall says of yes. all statistician over says yes that's it then. it's official it's Ryan Fleming the junior out of Seattle to punt and David Allen seven punt return touchdowns in his career hoping that he gets a chance to get his hands on one a snap got it away Double violation. Ball came out. <laughs> Recovered by Washington, but it will be Kansas State possession because of the five-yard penalty. Kirk's play. <laughs> Look at that. It was Omari Lowe. Ready to put the pressure on Allen. The rule is in there to protect the unprotected punt returner. Kick interference. Violation of the two-yard halo. Five yards from the spot of the foul. First down. 
Washington takes the, their first possession and drives, picks up a touchdown, three and out. They get the ball back here with a famous halo rule, and they'll have the ball when we come back. How would you like to curl up with a nice, thick instruction manual about water softeners? Me either. Life is just a little too short. That's why Culligan created the Worry-Free Water Program. Here's how it works. They do all the work, you don't. All you do is call Culligan, and the Culligan man takes it from there. Hey, Culligan man. So don't just order a water softener. Order a Culligan man. Call Culligan, and let somebody else worry about your water. Does your family's water need a clean bill of health? Find out at Culligan.com. Is your dandruff sending the wrong signals? Get Selsun Power. Doctors recommend Selsun Blue. So don't send the wrong signals. Get Selsun Power. Hello, Ms. Gruber, can I interest you in some wonderful opportunities in the stock? Ms. Gruber? Ms. Gruber? It's time for E-Trade. Sign up in December and get a $100 holiday bonus. America Online introduces new version 5.0. The easiest just got easier. You've got mail, you've got pictures. Instant messages. Customer service is always there to help. If I knew it was this easy, I would have started a long time ago. America Online. So easy to use, no wonder it's number one. The nation's top quarterbacks. Quincy Carter, Drew Brees, toe-to-toe -to -toe in the Outback Bowl. Georgia Purdue at 11, Saturday on ESPN. Twenty-second playing of the Culligan Holiday Bowl. Third quarter. The Kansas State quarter. They lead 17-13. I think we need to repeat that number. They have not allowed a point in 11 games in the third quarter. That's not even close. And we'll show you when they get back on defense how that compares with other good defenses yeah. in the country. That's remarkable. And it gives you the chance when you come out of halftime to put the hammer down. And the offense has the opportunity with the ball in good field position. Speaking of the hammer down, nearly 300 pounds of Joe Hall. First down, 12 yards. Well, the Wildcats have come out here in the second half, and they look like a completely different football team. A lot of that has to do with the offensive line, but also the play of Jonathan Beasley in that first drive, as Lee mentioned. Just one for one in passing, but they got the ball to Morgan for 38 yards, and he also carried the ball a couple times on the option. Three carries, 32 yards, and a touchdown. It's up to the Washington defense at this point to come up and make some plays because you can feel the Wildcats are starting to regain their confidence. Hall tries that right side and gains about three yards. Washington's run defense ranked seventh in the Pac-10 this year, 48th in the nation. You know, it's a young defense, and they have a lot of high hopes for next year, not only defensively, but also on the offensive side of the ball. But they are, because of their lack of experience throughout this year, and also lack of size, Teams have been able to not only run, but also have some, some uh, success throwing the ball as well. Larry Trick with the nose man trying to get in there. Four down linemen for second and seven. Out of the gun to another run by Beasley. This one was snuffed out. Curtis Williams from his free safety spot came up to finish him off. Matt Tuiaea applied the pressure up front. That's his old-time football. Just get it to the quarterback, and he becomes a running back. That's, the old, Lee. That's, that's your day. Johnny Majors, right. Tennessee. It looks just like Johnny. Johnny's a little quicker than he is, but Curtis <laughs> Williams, the secret of this play, the reason why this is play, everybody knocks the men down, and Curtis Williams, the free safety, is up there so quick. Nice support on that play. That's why it was stopped. He came up there quick to support him. Third and ten. Beasley, no pocket to throw, finds Martez Wesley. Three yards short of the first down. Daryl Daniels made the play, and a very important three and out for the Washington defense. Talked about the Washington defense, going to have to make some plays, and right there, to be able to force Kansas State to have to punt was a crucial, crucial 
sequence of plays and at this point in the game. Travis Brown had one blocked earlier, although they did not lose possession. Good job of protection this time. A moon ball. There we go. Hey, ho! Get the halo out. Get it out. <laughs> <laughs> the two-yard bubble violation will come up again. Neil they, Gosh, the long snapper, was down there. You think the coaches have have looked into this rule? Violation of the two-yard halo, five-yard penalty, first down. It's you a tough call. What, they're now in a no-win situation because the rule was put in so players wouldn't get their head up looking for the punt. Boom. They get smacked in the mouth. Well, I, try, I appreciate it. You can appreciate that, but... Why, why every, every week? Well, first it, of all, officiating I, or just no, no, I think it's poor, or First of all, I think it's poor coaching yeah, on the coverage teams. Yeah. They ought to teach the guys. If the guy looks like he's going to be a fair catch, slow down and break down. A that's a rule, system. right? That's yeah. a rule. Okay. <laughs> that's what I would do. First and right. ten for Tui Asasopo in Washington. Needing to make a play. Yes. The pass is a first down to Mart uh, Martez Wesley is 89 on the other side. Mike, that's Chris Jurgens for Washington. Coming up right after the game at Sports Center with Dan Patrick and Stuart Scott. The Lakers, boy, they playing great basketball out here in Southern California. For 10 in a row, the best father-son duo in sports. And Brett Hall going for the NHL Magic, number 600 goals. Sports Center, your source for sports news and highlights for 20 years. Coming up after the game. Best father-son in sports, of course, that ESPN.com question of the night. In part driven by the father-son combination we have here tonight. Manu Tuiasi Sopo, the great defensive lineman in the NFL, and his son Marcus, the quarterback of Washington. On the option, flag down, the pitch to Shaw. Kept going, got near midfield. But that flags in the backfield. That's one way you could block Darren Howard. Hold him. Hold him. Tackle him. He won't get on the quarterback this way. That's exactly what happened. Rick Neuheisel. He's only 38. He seems like he's been coaching so long, he's still one of the youngest coaches in college football. Rick has been here before at the Holiday Bowl. His Colorado team beat Washington in 1996. This is the 22nd Holiday Bowl. That game was a 12-point win not one of the typical holiday bowls. We usually have close games. And it's a last minute decision as to who gets that trophy. Just in long, the pass to Gerald Harris. The flanker gets it out to the 35 yard line in front of Dyshad Carter, the junior out of Denver, Colorado. One good thing that uh, Rick Newhouse has done, he's got two Yasser Sopo now throwing a three-step drop so he can't get side. Watch, he'll run a post route inside on number 35 and gets a good position, and the guy, two Yasser Sopo, throws the ball perfectly. I like the theory of the three-step to avoid this shot. Yep, going to the quick game and trying to take advantage of the matchups and straight man-to-man -man coverage against Kansas State. See it's man coverage as Carter follows the receiver in motion. That kind of the fullback. Another nice run. It's going to be third and short. So after the holding penalty, they pick up eight. And now a kind of run will make it third and two. Lamar Chapman, the tackle. It's again a veer option here. Tuyasa Sopo is going to read this. And he, he, you have to, again, appreciate this. Conniff and, and Tuyasa Sopo played in high school together. That time, the defensive end stayed wide. And when he stays wide, that signals to the quarterback and the fullback that it's going to be a keep. Very well executed by Washington on that veer option. First down awaits at the 47. They just need three yards. Simino coming. They pick him up. Tuyasa Sopo to the fullback. Conniff, first down. Washington. 13 yards, block 42, and it helps you get the ball off to your fullback. Tremendous call again by Rick Neuheisel, because what they do is they play action, freeze the linebackers, and they send Conniff in the back. Now watch, that freezes the linebackers, that play action, and Conniff, number 47, Kirk, is in the flat, wide open, because the linebacker bit on the fake. Really a risky play because oh. nobody picks up number 49 other yeah. than the, the tailback Arnold. They're relying on him biting on that play yeah, action right. and he did. It slowed him just enough. Good call. After Connick's third reception, Arnold, the freshman, is wrapped up 
And taken out of bounds. There was no one to block. And Jared Cooper from a strong safety spot made the play. Phil so Bennett right there making sure that everybody's in the right spot. Jared well, Cooper is a very aggressive safety. And Phil Cooper. Bennett making sure he's staying focused, staying on his responsibilities. You can see the intensity is written all over Phil Bennett's face. Very intense, man. Don't touch me. Hold on a second. Lost two, thanks to the stop by Cooper. Second and a dozen. Looker in motion. Quick toss to the tight end. That's Todd Elstrom, sophomore, 11 catches on the season. They're trying to score against Kansas State in the third quarter. That has not happened by anyone all season. Zero third quarter points allowed. Nobody was even close in the nation. Marshall in the third quarter with 12. Nebraska with 12 in the first quarter. Tells you how good their pregame preparation oh, yeah. was. But all the third quarters, Virginia Tech, Marshall, Kansas State, tells you a few things. One, it's great halftime adjustments. And second, you play great defense. You have a great season. Yeah. As much as we talk about sophistication and offense, it's about defense still in college football. Kind of again, they burned him with the fullback pass. The pressure's coming. They're getting enough quick to the fullback, and there are not enough numbers defensively in the secondary to handle them. Clearly, the Washington coaches upstairs have seen something. They had success with it in the first half. They've gone back to it. This time, they don't even use it because the tailback has to pick up. They don't use the play action. Kind of slips to the outside, and Kansas State has to make the adjustments to pick up the play action and the fullback slipping to the flag. Well, you see number 42, Mark Semino, blitzing. That's his man, a man for man coverage. You got to put the linebackers on the fullback. That's one way to slow down that pass rush is get him to the outside. Carl Durrell, the offensive coordinator, helping with these adjustments at age 35. He's a head coach of the future. Offside. Tuiasa Sopo pitches. Arnold. The two freshmen stayed in bounds all the way past the sticks. I think that's a Washington first down. Check the laundry. Was it the obvious call? Yes. Picks up the first down. Dr. Jerry Punch is on the sideline. Guys, I echo that call to offensive coordinator Carl Durrell for Washington at halftime. It's exactly what he was doing. He said, and he talked to Tuya Sopo, and he talked to his fullback, Conor. He said, you know, if Seminole comes, we're going to get the fullback much more involved in the running game and also the short passing game. I believe you're going to be wide open. A great adjustment by Washington offensive coordinator Carl Durrell. Durrell caught two touchdown passes in the 84 Rose Bowl that Rick Neuheisel was the MVP and quarterback for UCLA. It's been a productive night for the fullback. Tuiasa Sopo to throw. Had his own man in the way. A marker is down as Tuiasa Sopo is taken down by Mario Fadafehi, the junior from Hawaii. It was a holding penalty on Washington. Fadafehi's the one guy who was living in Hawaii and didn't want to go back there. I don't understand why. <laughs> if you take a look at number 49, Darren Howard coming from the outside again, you'll notice the one way to start in this guy is to right? grab a hold of him. Now watch. See that? Nice block. Ha! Boom. He pulls him down. Kurt Connell, the senior Kurt right Connell. tackle, a strong side tackle. Yeah, and what he did is he just grabs a hold of his jersey. And if you're going to hold a guy, he made some mistake by bringing his arms out wide. you got to hold him up inside and hold him on the numbers. Then the officials don't see it. Got to tell that kid that. Don't put your arms out wide. Keep them in your chest and hold them by the numbers. Kansas State sidelines checking down distance to decide if they want to take this flag or not. Holding on the offense. It's 10 yards from the previous spot. And we're going to repeat the down. Push him back. We've talked about Darren Howard all night. And again, we, when you talk to the Kansas State coaches, the NFL scouts have come in. This is a guy that's going to be very, very successful at the next level if he's willing to put in the work. He has all the tools. He's very athletic. He has a great feet. 6'4", 270 pounds. He has, he has the tools to be an outstanding defensive end at that next level. So this is a fine player you're watching tonight. He has that sixth sense of pass rushing. Look at all the Kansas State players at the line. Here they come. Tuiasa Sopo finds Dane Looker at the 11-yard line. That's six yards shy of a first down, but you have second and 
five coming up after the holding penalty. Tui Asasopo has been right on target on this drive. He is now six of six on this drive. And you can see that I know he's an athletic quarterback, but he's a fine throwing quarterback as well. He's been very accurate, not only tonight, but throughout the entire season. There he puts the ball on the money to Looker. We saw that play earlier in the first half and again picks up big yards for the Huskies. They're isolated on John McGraw, who's 6'3", 200 pounds, and only a sophomore. They got experience on that kid. Nobody has scored on Kansas State in the third quarter this year. Connors, no room there. It was Darren Howard making the play. Now, when you run a simple fullback belly, the last thing you're expecting is the, the defensive end away from the play to collapse down and be the first guy there to make the play, but he's been doing it all night. Remember, that was the play that the touchdown. The touchdown Washington used. They cut him off the last time, and, and Simino over pursued. They went right behind him. That time, Howard came down on a pitch move. So here comes third and five. Kansas State, best in the nation defensively on third down this year. Washington early success in this game on third down with runs. They'll throw. No time. He's dangerous on the run. First down. If he's spotted at the five, Manu Tuiasosopo checking out the mark. And there at the five, the sticks are on the far side. Hear the conversation on the sidelines. First down. You got it, Manu. First down. That'll take that. Good job by good job by Marcus of scrambling. He had to tight end Jeremy Stevens in the middle of the screen. It's easy to see from up here. He's running for his life, and he does a good job of picking up the first down. Stevens, there wasn't anybody within 15 yards of him right here. As I said, it's very easy to see him up here. Six, seven. Let me give you a stat. Washington players who picked up first down this year, Marcus has made 67% of those plays. 45 runs and 112 passes this year. First and goal, trying to take the lead. Maurice Shaw! The senior from Sacramento does what nobody's done against Phil Bennett's defense all season. A third quarter score against Kansas State. The 12 play drive ends with the extra point from John Anderson and Washington retakes the lead. Let me tell you something, that's worth more than seven points. Psychologically, that just destroyed Kansas State's defense. And there they go in, and where is old Mr. There's old Manu right there. Show him to me. That's it, Manu. Yeah, yeah. Go get him, Manu. Ha! <laughs> Hi, I'm Sean A. Jevia, and this month, Platinum Presents is jamming with a rockin' visit to one of the coolest places in North America, Toronto, Canada, home to much music. And we're really cranking up the volume with rock stars, sock stars, VJs, great plays, music videos, movie previews, and Fox Sports Net News. We'll catch the latest from HBO Stars and Showtime, plus plenty of surprises from Much Music. It's all happening this month on Platinum Presents on Channel 500, so don't miss out. Somewhere lies the greatest of all trails. It has blue skies, gray skies, and black skies. It's made of rock, dirt, concrete, and sometimes nothing but air. No one knows where it starts or where it ends. Have you ever come across this trail? Keep it to yourself. I've got a whole life left to search. Check out SportsCenter every night for a preview of the 2000 SBs. Log on to ESPN.com for the Performer of the Decade nominees. Compare your picks with ESPN's when the awards are televised February 14th. Watch SportsCenter or log on to ESPN for a preview. 
scoring is an art form displayed on the ice for all to see. Both Owen Nolan and Tony Amante can use their sticks to create masterpieces. Sharks, Blackhawks, Sunday at 8.30, only on ESPN. This is the game. The marina in San Diego. What a great place to hang out. Enjoy this beautiful city. It's wonderful people who are so courteous anytime we visit. Still adorned with the holiday illumination. A terrific scoring drive. The offensive line, the grinders help get it done. David Allen, they kick to him. It was a line drive. He had trouble fielding. Will he get a second opportunity to explode? Pulled down at the 30 by Pat Conniff. Conniff had a big, big roll in the drive. Oh, that's Anthony Kelly. They have double numbers, 47. And it's Anthony Kelly, the linebacker, who also wears 47. <laughs> They're everywhere. The double numbers are everywhere. It's the worst thing in college football, but we won't get <laughs> into right. it. There's the 47 that mattered. Pat Conniff's <laughs> been doing it all night. You know, he has four catches tonight for 57 yards. He's carried the ball four times for 15 yards, and he has a touchdown. The numbers aren't that important. It's the fact that they're getting him involved in the offense so many times in college football today. You don't see the fullback tonight. You're seeing it from Washington. It was the fourth longest drive the K-State defense gave up this year in terms of plays. A run by Joe Hall. Not much there. John Makovic talked in the studio with Rod and Chris at halftime about more of the pounding with, with Joe Hall. Trying to get Washington's defense a little bit softer. And they're at least philosophically going that way to start this third quarter. I just think that it's been not only pounding, it's been a, a different attitude. That first drive, you think back, it was a lot of throwing, but it was just that they had a different attitude. They were breaking the huddle, a little bit better tempo. A lot of point. Kansas State says it was Washington first. Washington says the opposite. A lot of times, the penalty here is a defensive linebacker will use a call like the snap count. And that's what they're complaining about, but they don't get it. That's why they all point their fingers at the linebacker, Mike. Hmm. All start on the offense, yard penalty. What a drive there by Washington. Oh. You talked about the psychological advantage of Washington after giving up that big scoring drive early in the to start the second half and then their defense coming up and making a play and the offense takes it down the length of the field that is that is big big mental advantage here for for Washington now the ball's back in the court of Kansas State second and 12 to Yasushoku jogging towards the locker room Beasley throws incomplete Marcus is just ducked into a spot away from view for a moment. I'm not saying anything. Hey. I have to do the same thing all the time myself. <laughs> except I don't get to leave here. How many steps to the restroom here at Qualcomm 14, Stadium? 14 to the urinal. That's 14. to the door? <laughs> no, to the urinal. 14 steps from here. It's the closest urinal we've ever had. <laughs> More than the Mississippi State. Oh, yeah, this is only 14 steps to the Urinal. To bowl game. We step oh, it up. That's right. Third and 12 for Beasley in the Wildcats. They bring six. Beasley's throw is nowhere close. Fourth down. All of a sudden, you start to believe. Start to believe again. You know, they, we saw it early in the first half. Mo Shaw gets the touchdown. The defense comes up with a stop. Oh, that was quick. He's back. He's ready to go. All right, Marcus, ready to go. <laughs> ready to roll. <laughs> uh, sometimes there are too many cameras. We don't miss a trick. I'm sure he appreciates that. Travis Brown gets off the kick to Joe Jarzinka. Try a little fake here. Be careful. Oh, they were able to pull it off. And Todd Elstrom has room. And Todd Elstrom has blockers. Set up pretty well.
Jarzinka, look at the way the wall is setting itself up. He starts to go off, almost about to be brought down, just gets it off before the knee touches, and Elstrom doesn't have outstanding speed, but he has good vision, picks up about as many yards as he can. Look how close this knee comes to touching before he hands it off. Ooh, it, was down. it was down. Actually, he did touch. In the league, you'd say review. Oh, yeah. Where's the red flag? Throw it out there. First and 10 from the 33. Chuyasa Sopo. He's looking deep. Into double coverage. It is intercepted by Lamar Chapman. Pulled down at the 8-yard line by the tight end, Jeremy Stevens. Chapman, who had five interceptions on the season, comes up with a momentum halter for Kansas State. I have no question that was a good call. They got the break and went for the jugular. They right? went for the jugular. Try to get the touchdown. I agree 250% with that call, even though it was intercepted. Chapman makes a good play, but it comes out of nowhere. You know what? I think here it was a case of Tuiasa Sopo not accounting for the free safety, who just sitting back and playing center field, reading the eyes of the quarterback and man free coverage. It looks like double coverage, but he just simply didn't see Chapman. First and 10 for Jonathan Beasley, who is just 9 of 21 throwing the ball. Remember, his season completion percentage is under 50. And he runs it. You can see his powerful build takes it to the 12. As we spin down towards the conclusion of the third quarter. It's all right. To hear him saying, my fault. He'd love to have that one back. Steve Axman, the quarterback coach. Great sounds of the sidelines, as always, with our Thursday night crew. Rick Neuheisel has put together a very fine staff. Eight of the nine coaches he's had have been coordinators on a college level, including two head coaches, Keith Gilberson, and we just saw Steve Axman. He's got a nice staff put together. Could be the final play of this third quarter. Joe Hall takes it to the 19. That will be yardage sufficient for a first down for Kansas State when we come back for the fourth quarter. It's the Holiday Bowl. The fourth quarter always means something in San Diego. The first three between the second best team in the Big 12, the second best team in the Pac-10 has been hard-nosed. Tough football. As we head to the final 15 minutes, it's the double-digit underdog that leads by three. with Culligan soft water. Some people don't. Culligan is water. Does your family's water need a clean bill of health? Find out at Culligan.com. This is the face of erectile dysfunction. So is this. And this. Fact is, one in three men have some form of ED, a medical condition also called impotence that affects men of every age, race, and background. What else do all these men have in common? They all faced up to their problem and got help. If you're experiencing ED, there's no need to hide your face. Just talk to your doctor. It's the best way to get educated about ED and how to treat it. Mark whatever you want. <laughs> At ZDNet, we'll help you get more out of technology. ZDNet.com where technology takes you. Nice. 
When we drafted Tim Duncan, I invited him to my home to get ready for the season. He was learning so much. That doesn't count. You were out. The roses are out, Timmy, not the daisies. So one day, you brought this into my home? It's not something I'm proud of. I calmly explained how Edge Pro Gel protects better than foam because it has eight rich lubricants. David sure knew how to make a guy feel comfortable. More lemonade, Tim? Edge Pro Gel. Save your skin. The roses, Tim, are out of bounds. Go with the gnomes. The gnomes can be out of bounds. No, no. <laughs> And now the fourth quarter from San Diego, the 22nd Culligan Holiday Bowl. With Dr. Jerry Punch, Kirk Herbstreit, Lee Corso, Mike Tirico. Not only glad you joined us, but glad we can be a part of this game once again. What fun. First down was picked up on the last play by K-State. From its own 19. Joe Hall gets hit by Larry Tripp with the nose man. Well, he's an emerging sophomore. Watch out for him in the next year or so in the Pac-10. Boy, is he a force in the middle. The Beck storyline tonight, Marcus Tuiasasobo, high completion percentage. Jonathan Beasley, under 50%, as has been the norm this year. Washington's moved the ball a little bit more than most on Kansas State. K-State's made more mistakes then you're used to seeing a Bill Snyder, a well-coached team, make. It all adds up to we have a ball game. Here comes second and nine. Beasley on the run to Quincy Morgan. It will be third down and three coming up for Kansas State. Washington in the fourth quarter. They have the lead, and they have been a good fourth-quarter team this year. Oh, no question. Last year, Washington was outscored by 76 points in the fourth quarter. This year, they won the fourth quarter by 25. Kirk, that's a swing of 100 points. That's a tremendous compliment to Rick Neuheisel and his staff. You know what? Those aren't just numbers. You know what they've done? They've been able to come back and win three games in the fourth quarter, so it's not where they're just running up points. Very important to realize they're a competitive team. They're also playing a team that out has outscored their opponents 208 to 41 in the second half, so both teams have played well in the fourth quarter this year. We'll see who ends up winning it. Third and three. They picked up the pressure. Morgan caught it. Fighting for extra yards. Will they spot him at the forward progress? It looks as though they're going to spot him at the 30 where his forward progress was. And that should be right at the first down stick. Simple throw here for Jonathan Beasley. Still can't seem to shake his funk that he seems to be in tonight. This time they're going to take advantage of a soft cushion by number 34, Roderick Green. They go to their money man, number five, Quincy Moore, going to pick up the, t the first down. One thing I would change, though, I would take out Joe Hall, number 30, and I wonder why Frank Murphy, number three, is not in the game, the guy with the whole run ball. This guy will be just good enough to get a beat with small games. They need a big game. Murphy, no carries this half. Yeah. Flags come in. Another mistake. Man, you know this eats at Bill Snyder. Oh. Dead ball. Oh. Ball starts on the offense. Five-yard penalty. More sloppiness from this offense. That time it was a simple check at the line of scrimmage where the quarterback goes into his cadence, and as he's into it, all of a sudden he changes his cadence and he and he almost pulls himself out from under center. And in doing that, it triggered one of the offensive linemen to move out of there. These are all mistakes that you see because of the long layoff in bowl games. Kansas State, if they could have played their bowl game the week after the Missouri game, their last one of the season, they would have beaten everyone. They beat Missouri 66 to nothing in a dominant performance. Beasley throws. Luck at the intended receiver, and here's Doc Punch. Guys, we have not seen Frank Murphy in the second half, and we are not going to see the senior out of Callahan, Florida. He is in street clothes there. He stands on the Kansas State bench. Now, they don't uh, relate injury information, but uh, he came out of the locker room in the second half in street clothes. He is standing up on the bench watching, and he will play no more tonight. So a huge loss for the Kansas State offense. Dr. Should Jerry we first Fox? guess left quad? I, I said it was his right leg, but it was his left leg. Left, but left let me quad. But is there anybody better than Dr. Jerry Punch? I just said why the kid's not playing. Jerry Punch says this is why. If you people listen to us, you can learn a lot. There are doctors in America who give you immediate answers. Second and 15, screen. This is their big play, and Washington busts it up. 
That's a bread and butter play for Kansas State. And and Washington knows it. Tim Hundley sat with us last night in the game room. <laughs> he sat with us and, and he said when they go to that jailbreak screen, when they like to get the ball to Quincy Morgan, it's in third and long situations typically. And that's exactly where they were in a, in a long, second long. And they knew it. They smelled it. You could see that Washington was ready for it on that particular, that particular play. He came with Neuheisel from Colorado. He was the defensive tackle coach at CU. Good crowd. Beasley coming back towards Morgan. Made the catch at the 47. Roger Green, the defender, fell down. 22 yards later, Tuiasa Sopo sits on the bench a little bit more. When you have a long route like this, you need protection. Look how long this takes. He's going to move to the inside. He gets Green to bite, and once he bites, he threw that ball well before Quincy Morgan even turned. And that's good timing there from Beasley and Quincy. Quincy Morgan on the deep outcut. If Kansas State's going to win the ball game tonight, they got to go to the big play guy, and that's Quincy Morgan. But they also got to put maybe David Allen in as a running back to make a nice play. They need a big play to get up there quick against Kansas State, so they, I mean, against Washington, so they could turn those defensive guys loose. Well, see, that, that's what their, their offense has been known for, the ability yeah. to go yeah. downfield yeah. and score quickly. Also, and with Murphy down, you have to think they're going to look to Allen or to Quincy Morgan for the big play. Cross each other by chance. I'm a radar operator and I play the drums. I drive the ship, I refuel at sea, I land helicopters, and I'm the lead guitarist in the blues band. And hydraulic systems, mechanical systems, and pneumatic systems, they all interface together. Boom, boom, boom. But on my off time, I prefer to play the piano. I operate, maintain, and fire the Mark 86 gunfire control system. I also play saxophone, keyboard, and guitar. I have to say, that's a tight group of guys. To prove the power of interstate batteries, today I'm racing the family cruiser with my family. Joe and Norma catching a few rays, and looky there, my wife's getting a full makeover. Interstate, the official battery of the family car. Flip. This is my invention. The silverware instrument. C'est les lunettes éclairantes. You could slide them, but they don't slide by themselves. It worked. It worked. Head light. It can change somebody's life. 24 hour sundance. That is the greatest idea I've ever came up in my whole life. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 1999 Culligan Holiday Bowl is presented by Culligan. For all your water solutions, visit us online at Culligan.com. And in part by Hewlett Packard, fueled by a passion to invent. Hotel Del Coronado, <laughs> another one of the must stop places in San Diego. Is this, is this your favorite? You, you do a lot of traveling. Is this your favorite stop? It's right up there, buddy. This is is it? I mean, you see some gr very, very nice. This is right up there. Up there. Okay, I just want to make yes. sure you. Cause you you're making me want to stay here. Right. You keep talking about it. Hey, you guys are going to New Orleans to join Chris. Oh, we can't wait. coverage of the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Woo! The national championship game. The option to keep after the K-State timeout. Beasley takes it across midfield. Lester Towns made the play. Speak of Lester Towns in bowl week. Lester Towns is from Pasadena, California. It's where he grew up. Got his snicker bars in him last night. He's ready to roll. Ready to play hard. What did he say? Four? Four Three? snicker bars. Four snicker bars. Rick Neuheisel came in and brought the gold helmets back to Washington football. And Towns was one of the seniors who was recruited by the allure of that gold helmet look earlier in Washington football days and was glad to see it back. As, as am I. Thank heavens it's back. On second and six. Long throw is caught by Lockett. 
Yep, he hung on to it. Aaron's down at the 40-yard line. Nine-yard pickup. Good enough for a first down. You know, with 11-10 to go, it's important that Kansas State moves there and gets ahead of this football team and then allows the defense to start blitzing and try Turn to put loose. the pressure on. Right. Turn it loose. They got one chance. They got to score now. Even if they don't score, if they can tie the game, the defense will then rise up and play better, I think. It's been a long drive as well. Look at that cushion again by Smith. Trying to take advantage of the soft coverage by these Washington corners. And you understand why. K-State is a big play team. Beasley was looking for the long play. It was covered. Now he's in trouble. Farns is chasing him. He lets it go. He got another ball. Was knocked off his pins by Curtis Williams. Oh, man. I'm not so sure that John Hall yep. didn't take the ball away from Quincy Morgan. Yeah, I think Joe Hall. Joe Hall's in a position where I, yeah. I just happen to be watching him yeah. as he snuck down the sideline. You know, the big guy's yeah. running down the sideline all by himself because of, yeah. right at this point, the play's broken. They were trying to hit a backside slant to Morgan. Now he's just improvising, and the big boy, not the quarterback Beasley, but what? Joe Hall was all by himself. Oh. And I tell you, that's a lot of work there by number 25, Curtis Williams, to come over and hit Joe Hall like that. Oof. To use a uh, paraphrase one of our friends, he was rumbling and stumbling <laughs> down that sideline. <laughs> Second and 10. Hall is getting a breather. <laughs> Throwing the out to the wide side and getting the ball there because of the cushion you talked about, Quincy Morgan that time, Kirk. A lot of fear from the Washington secondary. They respect Quincy Morgan. He averages 24 yards per catch and Lockett 16 yards a catch. Here, Von Tour is a guy that likes to gamble a little bit, loses his balance, but I like the play call. You're moving the ball down the field. You're picking up first downs by throwing the ball underneath. I'd like to see one of those sidelines and up side. pretty soon. Yep. Right there to the... Out by the up. O or the S in the end zone. Maybe we'll see that one a little bit later. You saw Morgan's over 100 yards. He was over 1,000 receiving yards this year. First and 10. David Allen. A couple of yards. It was a balanced first 30 minutes of play calling from Ron Hudson, Kansas State's offensive coordinator. The mix in the second half has stayed somewhat balanced. I got a question for you, Mike. What was Jamie Ream's longest field goal? 56? Uh, 56 or 57, Mr. Corso. Give me a second here. It's 57 against Utah State. They are now in field goal range yes, sir. with this kid. Although it's a tough kick, at least they know he can make it. Well, after Washington's 11-play drive, this is a long one from Kansas State. Play 13. And then he's made up there. Oh, and he got out of the trouble. And avoided a huge hit that was coming on the sideline. They were flying after Beasley. Mm. When you have a quarterback who runs it over 100 times, you can get out of plays that are mental mistakes. Even though he is a, a quarterback that feels comfortable scrambling, moving around any defense in the country, when they see a quarterback who is moving around, panicking, clearly a play that is broken down, it's like seeing blood in the water. They all want to come up and get a lick, and you hear the fans behind us. They felt that they hit him a little bit late and a little bit out of bounds. They have a complaint. 36. Just four. No pressure, so time to throw. Did Wesley have possession? Yes, he did. Martez Wesley, first down, Kansas State. Lee Rick, you can hear me, bobbled the ball. Well, they're starting to work on Anthony Botor still because of the fact the guy's been playing pretty good defense, but he's getting tired. They're alternating receivers at him, and Botor is just having a hard time playing all those guys. This is the third guy we've seen catch a ball on him. Great shot there. Oh, yeah. See, they're taking him out because he's tired. That's a good defensive call. If I was offensive guy, I'd go right after their substitute right now. This drive is getting up on seven minutes here. Will they break? Paul Stiffar to the 11. Hakeem Akbar in on the tackle. 
Washington was known for its defense when it built the best record in the Pac-10 in the 90s. That's what the Huskies have. The defense has had to evolve. That, that pressure with all the men up front, they were getting burnt with the deep ball. So this defense has changed a little bit. It took a while for these players to get used to this system. And you can tell the way they're playing tonight, it's forcing Ron Hudson to go to an alternate game plan. This drive is seven minutes. You know, typically their drives are two minutes. They score quick. Play 17 is Hall. Bouncing off tacklers. Tough to keep bringing down 300 pounds when it's coming up on the 18th play of the drive. A and oh, Joe Hall is, a, is six foot two, 300 pounds at least. Now, what's what I like about it? Watch, he gets hit right here. Look at, he runs over his own man. Get out of my way. And boom. Oh, he runs right over number nine, Akbar. Oh, what a runner this kid is. He had three 100 yard games this year against Utah State, Oklahoma, and Baylor. Because of some injuries, they tried to move him to fullback. He said, no, 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 no. Put no, no, no. me back here deep where I can carry him. Third and four. Who first? Was it Kansas State again? Isa might have jumped off. Well, Isa moved in the entire left side from Kansas State. Yeah. Moved with him. It's going to be an interesting call. They are discussing what did you see? That's what officials talk about in conferences like this. What did you see? Yeah. And the decision went against the man who has a law degree. Jabari Isa moves across right there. And I'm telling you, the ball was snapped. But number 66, Moses. I don't know. What do you think? I think the left side reacted. Left side reacted to Issa oh. moving. Well, I still thought he had a flag. It's the right call. It is. The way it was explained tells the folks exactly what you saw. And that's why those conferences take a little while. Just make sure that you have the majority opinion. So it still sets up third down, but now it's third and less than a yard. Remember, what they ran one time here, they ran a quarterback draw. And there's Hall, the 300 pounder. Here's, here's your quarterback sneeze, Bentley. You think? Yep. First down. Hello. It'll be first and goal at the two. What a drive. Let me tell you something. Jonathan Beasley is listed at. 216 pounds. I'll bet you he's got 200 pounds from his waist down. Yeah, he's, he a, <laughs> he's a junior. Redefining lightheaded. Well, I just want to mention it. The guy has got a <laughs> low center of gravity. He sure does. He, he, he's going to have to. He's going to have to right, drop a few pounds for next season. Whoa, look at that. Here he pushes off. <laughs> There's a the leg drive. Look at that leg drive. He looks like he looks like Joe Hall from behind. <laughs> 16 <laughs> plays was the longest drive for Kansas State this year. This is the 19th play. Looking to take the lead. Tried to power it towards the goal line. The complaint from Towns was for a flag. It looked like the center and the quarterback were on the same play. Maybe a little mishandle on the snap. Made it look from the eye like it was not a well-timed play. Talked about how both teams love to play hard in the fourth quarter. We're seeing a drive right now that illustrates that for Kansas State. Really a sign of the character and heart of this football team down, needing a big drive, and so far they've been able to do that here on this drive. 20th play of a nearly 10-minute drive. Keep your eye on Joe <laughs> One timeout remaining. The drive that would not end is going to end soon. Will it be a tie game or a lead? It's the water, and it's water. It's a pure cold shower from nature. Bringing life to your home, to the world. Come again. Does your family's water need a clean bill of health? Find out at Culligan.com.
There has never been anything like The Sopranos on TV. The greatest work of American popular culture of the last quarter century. Groundbreaking. Brilliant. A phenomenon. Engrossing. First class. Four stars. Perfect. A masterpiece. What's that, a threat? No, Tony, it's a rave review. How are you feeling now? Good and fun. Back at work. <laughs> Just in time for the holidays at Circuit City. Get an instant $400 toward any Circuit City purchase when you sign up for three years of CompuServe 2000 Premier Internet Service, only $21.95 per month. Just sign up at Circuit City, and we'll hand you a $400 merchandise card instantly. Good toward anything in our store. Apply your $400 merchandise card to a computer, camcorder, big screen TV, or refrigerator. It's $400 of whatever you want, only at Circuit City. Christmas may have passed, but Santa seems to have left a few sacks behind. The Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, Clemson, Mississippi State at 7.30, Thursday on ESPN. We were talking during the timeout, and Kirk pointed out that this fourth quarter has seen no Washington offensive snaps. It's unbelievable. You have to go back to after they had the big punt return. The first play, they took a shot at the end zone. It was intercepted. And from that point on, Kansas State has had the ball, which includes the entire fourth quarter. And you saw Washington at that TV uh, timeout walking back to the sideline and then walking back on the field. They are tired, tired defense. But they can't assume this is going to be a touchdown. They're going to have two hands on the ball. No fumbles. 20th play of the drive. Beasley makes an adjustment. Seven on the play clock. Option. Beefy. Scoring. Said at the start of the game, the Big 12 team was the team with the speed. That was an old-fashioned Big 8 drive. That was here we come. Boom. 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 <laughs> Jamie Ream to make it a four-point game. Tell you what, Jonathan Beasley isn't having a great night as far as throwing the football, but he's giving a gritty performance, making good decisions, and here putting an exclamation point on a 20-play, 92-yard drive that takes up nine minutes and 54 seconds. Kansas State with a go-ahead score. Here's a holiday gift for being a DirecTV customer. We'll be singing, laughing, and ringing in the new year with style. Here, live from the Disney MGM Studios, join me and musicians like Cheap Trick, LFO, Styx, Leonard Skinner, George Thurgood, 38 Special, and many others. Ring in the New Year with the best music and comedy show in town right here at the Disney MGM Studios. Countdown to the Millennium, live. 9 p.m. Eastern, Channel 104. Another DirecTV Freeview event. Next month. Let the party! Big yeah! Start your millennium with a movie. Great plan, Einstein. On Direct TV. Yeah, baby, yeah! Austin Powers, the spy who shagged me. Woo! Wild Wild West. <laughs> the Iron Giant. Are you a murderer? Oh, yeah. Instinct. That movie has loved my fragile little man. South Park, bigger, longer, and uncut. Are you love it here? The Haunting. Entertainment for the next thousand years starts next month on Direct TV. Who's the biggest college basketball fan from outer space? Oh, Ulix be me name. He's hip, he's cool, and he can only be found on Hoops Malone. Come strong or don't come at all, me boy. Hoops Malone is brought to you by College Hoops on ESPN. Later on SportsCenter, the Lakers look to improve on the league's fattest record. The Heat and Magic square off in a Sunshine State throwdown, and the Music City Bowl goes down to the wire. Join me, Stuart Scott, and Dan Patrick, Sports Center after the game. In the seesaw game, it's now Kansas State's turn to take the top portion. 
24 to 20. After one of the great drives of this season. Anywhere. 20 plays, 92 yards, 9 minutes, 54 seconds. And now one of the best defenses in the country has no excuse. They are rested. They are ready. <laughs> Arrested. And they are playing with the lead. They went in for a cup of coffee with Marcus. <laughs> Joe Jarzinka and Paul Arnold. It will be Jarzinka for the three. To the 20. Tuiasa Sopo's first snap of the fourth quarter coming up. Great aerial shots from the Fuji Film Limp tonight. Its final appearance of the century. Thanks to onboard cameraman Greg Johnson, the rest of the crew, Captain John McHugh, Mike Fitzpatrick. And thank you for the pictures from above as we look down to a crowd of 57,118. <laughs> Gerald Harris in motion. Tui also so low to throw. Seven yards to Chris Jurgens. It's interesting. When we talked to Rick Newhouse yesterday, he said to us that he thought that Washington would win this game if they could keep the defense from Kansas State from scoring and no special teams played by David Allen. And he said that this defense from Kansas State reminded him of Nebraska, and he would have been three and one. Colorado versus Nebraska if those two areas hadn't beat him. It's exactly what he wanted right now. Second and three run. Tuiasa Sopo kept it. Got the first down and more. Well, stiff arm from Marcus to the 45. That's 18 tough running yards. Inside of five minutes now. This may be their only possession of the quarter. This is the third time tonight we've seen the veer play by Tuiasa Sopo. Again, he's making the read, and Conniff and he have to be on the same page, reading the defensive end out here to the outside as he collapses down on the fullback, keeps the ball, great blocks downfield, and then that's where Tuiasa Sopo is in his comfort zone, breaking tackles, running the option, and picking up big yards. It was like adding a class late semester, learning the option. These coaches have done a nice job. The pass for Conniff is a reception for the quarterback, Tuiasa Sopo, and he loses five yards. The rare reception for the quarterback after the deflection by Monty Bisol. Boy, Bisol was in there very good. Monty Bisol, number 44, came from the outside with a nice play, Kirk. He put a lot of pressure on Tuyasa Sopo. There's that pressure we've been talking about. We talked about it early in the game in the open about the defense. In a way, Kansas State has had one of the best defenses throughout the entire country. Look at the numbers throughout the season, their season average. You can see Washington has had some success in comparing the average numbers throughout the season to tonight. And that's why the Huskies are in this game. Inside of four minutes, the pressure comes. The throw is complete, just shy of midfield. Dane Looker with the reception. It'll be third and about five. Jerry punched down the sidelines. As typically happens at about 8 o'clock local time in San Diego, it cools down like a snap of the finger. What was Washington doing at the end of the Kansas State drive to be ready for this drive? They basically had the whole team trying to move over. It has gotten probably at least 15 degrees cooler. They had uh, Marcus Tuyas and Sopo and the other quarterbacks trying to keep their arms limbered up. It has gotten considerably cooler. A good way to pull a muscle. And Tuyas and Sopo had to be ready to throw the football. Third and five. Up the safety blitz, the late throw, incomplete. Chris Jurgens went up and couldn't hang on. 3.42 left. Washington has two timeouts. They trail by four. We've seen a lot of quarterbacks this year doing Thursday night games. And Lee, when you, myself, and Chris go on the road on game day, we're seeing a great effort tonight by Tuiasa Sopo. Here he gets hit, throws the ball up. Watch him get hit. He gets drilled. He throws the ball up there to Jurgens. But the thing you have to appreciate, 
is the ability to avoid the trouble, but keep his composure downfield and make the throw. And notice number one, Lamar Chapman's on the safety blitz. I wouldn't be surprised if they would go after him right now on fourth down. Fourth and a long five. They're going for it. An option. Forget it. Darren Howard, the all-time sack leader. Mark Simino, the All-American, make the big play. Bill Bennett's big defensive players come up in there, including Monty Beisel, the other defensive end. There's the blitz we talked about. They put the pressure, they don't give him an option. Yeah, but it was penetration there by Monty Beisel, who got through there and blew up the option. Because, Watch him blow right through there. Yeah, but because the reason it didn't work is because they were blitzing him. Yep. If they'd have sit back there, they would have made that play. And a couple of first downs in Kansas State will get its bowl win. And now you use the 300-pound load. Joe Hall, a couple of yards. Take your time getting off the pile. Washington chooses to use one of its two timeouts at the 329 mark, trying to roll the dice here on this drive. The lead is four. A touchdown would close it out. Be right back. January 14th, the director of White Men Can't Jump takes you between the ropes. You're fighting Vince in Vegas. In Vegas. Behind the scenes. I'm gonna hit you like a hammer. And beneath the sheets. Why are you fighting? Because they pay us. <laughs> Woody Harrelson, Antonio Banderas in the story of two best friends yes! and their last shot at greatness. I just don't like you. Knockout. I don't like you either. Lay it to the bone. Rated R. Starts Friday, January 14th. Every year I say, I'm gonna quit smoking. Day later, I'm at it again. Till this year. See this? My last piece of Nicorette gum. Been smoke-free with Nicorette now for 12 weeks. With Nicorette, I help control my cravings two ways. I used it on a regular schedule to help curb them. And then for unexpected cravings, I took another piece. And now, no more craving, no more nicotine. Happy New Year. For a better quit date, you'll have to wait another thousand years. You can do it. Nicorette can help. little voice in your head makes you feel guilty for having too much of a good thing. Yeah, we don't either. Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. These people have had a good time. Uh, the folks in Manhattan, Kansas, 41,000 season ticket number at Kansas State is impressive when you consider the population of Manhattan is 43,000. You want to talk about loyalty and dedication. And the band serenading the K-State fans have made the trip to San Diego, enjoying the timeout. Second and eight from the 44. A throw here. Complete. The Kansas State sideline yelling for a flag. Jermaine Smith had the coverage, and most importantly, the clock stops, and New Heisel can keep the timeout in his pocket. A little bit of a surprise here by Kansas State trying to get the ball downfield. I like to call the fact that they have one-on-one -on -one matchup with Morgan. The downside is if you don't hit it, obviously the clock stops, and you don't you don't put Washington in a position to have to use that timeout, so they still have one left. But there's one thing about this. If they don't make the first down, they should be able to punt it unless they get a block and leave them about 90 yards to go. That's a lot of yards. Third and eight. Two on the play clock. One. Didn't get it off. Yep. yep, they got the flag. They got the flag. Third and even longer. It's a good job by the side judge. Delay. Delay. Daryl Harrison, who has the view of the snap and the play clock in his vision line. There's one thing very important. I think the people at Kansas State were doing a little bit of rocking a little bit too early. 
I mean, there's enough time with two, two Yasa Sopo throwing the football. They can get that ball. Neuheiser's got some trick plays, I bet you. He can move the ball down to score yet. Another good job. They reset the time that ran off the clock. Yeah. Delay of game. Clock should not have moved. And five seconds could mean everything. If Tui Asasopo can touch it one more time. Steve Axman, the quarterback coach, is right there with him. They're ready. They just want another chance. Third and 13. Paul's ready to block on the blitz. <laughs> Unless, I'm telling you, don't forget, it. they already got one. Yeah. They lost 19 yards there. 19. <laughs> you gotta love the fact that Washington has come to play football tonight. And time after time, they've been tested. Their will has been tested, and they keep coming up with big plays. Here, Kelly beats his man to the outside. Wes Call, and when he gets to the outside, it's just a matter of wrapping up the big quarterback, and he took him down. Good call by making that final call of the timeout. It's interesting that they'll probably second guess Ron Hudson for not making Washington use the timeouts, if nothing else. Travis Brown had one blocked earlier, although possession stayed with Kansas State after the attempt to advance the block punt was fumbled. Bobby Houck, the special teams coach, said we can get him from the middle or perhaps off the corner. You see they're digging in on the end. Set up to return. This is a beautiful, high, spiraling kick. Jarzinka taken back to the 24 and pulled down three yards farther back. Oh, in a season where Travis Brown has struggled, think things weren't going his way, yeah. but they were congratulating fans in Manhattan at the end of the season, running around to shake hands with everyone. He stepped in a hole and sprained his ankle in the celebration after the game. Comes up with a huge kick at a huge time. The 45-yard punt gives us a chance to remind you the Lakers are going for 10 straight. The question of the night at ESPN.com and Brett Hull's quest for 600 are the stories Dan Patrick and Stu Scott have for you as soon as we're done in San Diego. Highlights reaction from this game. Highlights of the earlier bowl game today won by Syracuse over Kentucky. Washington, they've had the ball a half minute this quarter. Tuyas is so far on a run. To the sideline, right at the first down marker, got out of bounds. Second and less than a yard. Kansas State is looking for its first ever win over Washington. When Bill Snyder took over this program, he tried to get out of a non-conference game with Don James Huskies. Washington won 56-3 in Seattle. That was the team that won the national championship out of the Pac-10. Washington is trying to fast forward its resurgence with a bowl win over number seven Kansas State. Second and one. As is caught and Jurgens gets out of bounds. Clock would have stopped in the first down anyway, but it's at the 37. And one of the things that I've noticed this is a very well coached football team offensively using a two minute drill. And that comes from Rick Neuheisel, yes, the former quarterback, the former offensive coordinator. He's got his guys really sharp. They do exactly what they know to do. They have good protection. They're running, they're using the ball. I like the calls from Rick Neuheisel's offensive staff. Remember the first try to score at the end of the, se at the, end of the game this season when we were there at BYU and they almost got it done? A marker comes down here. certainly hurt the cause of moving forward. Dead ball. Paul Stokes. Offense. Five yard penalty. Remember the end of the game? Washington comes all the way back. The Kevin Federick hits the great pass to Hale. Oh, yeah. right? The athletic that director's son of BYU. Tui Asasopo gets him close. One shot at the end on the end of the game. Neuheisel runs right to his quarterback and just lets him know what a great job he did. The nurturing of a quarterback started that night. Will it pay off here? He's in a lot of trouble. 
got past the line of scrimmage to the 35 so knowing that the clock keeps going gets his receivers back right away but Tuyas Asopo has one thing going for him in this situation he can run he might make a big play running the football second and 12 they're doing a great job of coverage on this drive Gerald Harris broke free and almost had a big play Get a matchup like that one on one you need to you need to capitalize especially in a situation like that when you get to the outside you break contain it's tough on that secondary to stay with those receivers Let's just highlight here real quick coach Washington out of timeout yeah that's what I was just gonna say number one and most important it's third and 12 they've got to use two plays to make the first down they don't have to be greedy they make a 10 yard pass that's good make a five yard pass first down because they've got to go for fourth down they yeah but if they don't make it and the clock keeps, I, you, you need to throw the ball downfield. I think you got to throw about 10 yards. Right there. Off the hands of Harrison, incomplete. Jeez. That was a perfect call because now they would have had fourth down at about four. Now he's got to go fourth down at about 13 to get it tough. Oh, he's got to catch his football. There's no question. It's right in his hands. Look at this. Right in his hands, and it's a perfect call. Oh. Gerald Harris, who leads the team in yards receiving this year. Remember the BYU game week one of the season. They made some big fourth downs to keep the drive alive. This could be the game right here. Gets it done when they needed to here in the fourth quarter. They only were tested twice. They stopped them both times. Well, on fourth and long, Tuiasa Sopo out of the shotgun, realizing he needs something. Once he breaks to the outside, there was only one receiver over there. He was double covered. He basically just threw it up, Hail Mary, hoping that Jurgens would come down with it. Very lucky it wasn't intercepted. And it's amazing that a little short pass to Gerald Harris forced him to go for that long ball. He could have had a lot of things. He could have run for a first down. He could have done a lot of things with that short yardage situation. It cost him the ball game. No timeouts for Washington. Kansas State's just going to take a knee. They cannot completely run out the clock. If you figure, well, they'll be real close. close. 33 seconds with 25 on the play clock. And and the Phil Bennett story, Lee brought it up earlier, his wife Nancy struck by lightning while jogging in August, age 41 taken from him and taken from Sam and Maddie, their two kids, and what a year he's had with trying to still be a coach in a new place and the support around him from the people in Manhattan who really didn't know the Bennetts are incredible. You see the initials on the side of his headset. He said he looks in the stands before the game, anytime he thinks of Nancy, who was taken far too soon. Time out as Kansas State was trying to avoid a delay of game penalty. We'll be right back. It starts with Texas Instruments' programmable DSP. It's the power for the smartest cell phones and internet access to the latest digital sound. And when new generations evolve, rather than retool or replace, you can simply reprogram. The new frontier is no longer out there. It's here. Hardware, software, and open thinking. From the world's leader in DSP and analog, Texas Instruments. Introducing new smooth mint scope. It keeps your breath feeling clean and fresh longer. kills bad breath germs and now it's tingle lasts and lasts because finding true love is just a matter of time so be ready with new smooth men's scope feel the tingle longer another close and exciting culligan holiday bowl it looks like kansas state is going to get it done in this really really exciting game once again this year dan and Stu coming up with sports center the day in sports recap. Remember more bowl action tomorrow, highlighted by the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl at night. 
a triple header on New Year's Eve the Outback Bowl on New Year's morning after college game day Beasley will run the clock a little bit will go down and slide before he gets to the sideline to run some more clock Dr. Jerry punch we talked about the terrible tragedy that Phil Bennett had gone through this year with his family and losing his wife Nancy of course and he saw the two youngsters up there he said that, you know the community the entire community rallied around him but no one in his life has ever been as special as head coach Bill Snyder was said Snyder during two days would come to the hospital at five o'clock in the morning after the first practice come back at noon and at night would come back at midnight and stay with him at the bedside with Nancy until 2 a.m. every morning three times a day that man would come support his assistant coach uh, Phil Bennett he said what a special guy he is to work for and what a special family man he has as well a slag thrown here as the play clock was running down Jerry mentioned the kids 11 year old Sam and nine year old Maddie there is Sam and the Kansas State family has rallied around Ball start on the offense. this entire the group. It was neat when he brought him in. Remember, he brought Sam in to meet yep. us at this in the interview with him? Yep, and there's Maddie. And your heart breaks for those kids, but your heart is warmed by the fact that there are people around mm -hmm. to support the life of a college coordinator, especially a workaholic like Phil Bennett, does not correspond with playing Mr. Mom. And the people around Kansas State football have helped him be possible. They're asking him to go after the ball. Beasley goes down. It's fourth down coming up. And depending on when the ball is marked ready for play, this game will be over. Next year for these teams, Kansas State. Well, Kansas State's got a quarterback named L. Robert Robertson. Yep. The red shirt they said is terrific. Remember one thing. They've got 16 guys coming back. Dude, this could be a good football well, team. L, L, Ron Hudson says L. Robertson reminds him a lot of uh, Michael Bishop. And uh, look at Washington. What a great effort tonight. Rick Neuheisel did a good job with this ball club. They have almost everybody returning next year, and they're off to a great start in recruiting. So both these teams are going to be competitive next year. Boys, this was yeah, awesome. This great. This oh, is nice a lot of fun. fun as I've had doing this. Thank this you. Good. good job. And this was great tonight, too. Bill Snyder and his team said, we can't erase the Alamo Bowl from last year. We think we belong to the BCS as an at-large team. They do belong in the top ten. They play great defense. But tonight it was their offense on a 20-play, 92-yard drive that won the game and the Culligan Holiday Bowl for Kansas State. Sports Center's next for Dr. Jerry Punch, Kirk Herbstreit, Lee Corso. This is Mike Tirico. So glad you've been with us all year for our Thursday night games. Hope you enjoyed the Holiday Bowl. Sports Center is next. Good night from beautiful San Diego. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Proud to celebrate another moment from our first 20 years. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network. Go.com. ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.